College football is more than a game. It's a blend of deep-rooted history and rich tradition. In the last 40 years, we've seen teams that are nothing short of legendary. Players who've become icons of the sport, and now the game has truly become a national obsession. But imagine if we hit the rewind button back to 1980 and we were able to re-simulate history. Well, that's what I've done. I've crafted 30 of college football's finest players from 1980 and placed them back at their original schools. But the real twist comes with each offseason. I'm going to be adding the top 23 recruit from the actual recruiting class of that year. We're going to track their journey from the start of the recruitment process to national signing day. This is going to fuel the new dynasties of the sport and reshape the college football universe. Then I've also made 24 of the best coaches of all time and reset their age to 22 and restarted their coaching careers at the school where they became legends. And we're going to watch their careers unfold, tally their wins, watch them chase national titles, and we will see who will emerge as the new greatest coach of all time. We're also going to follow along with each season, dissect player stats, follow team records, catch the biggest games live, and witness the crowning of new national championships. Now, I'm also going to be keeping track of the best player, coach and team of each decade. So I'm going to need you guys to help in the comment section below telling me who should win each award. And at the end of each decade, I will be making a poll on my YouTube so you guys can vote on the winner. So if this sounds like something you would be into, make sure you sub to the channel so that you can help vote on the polls and so you don't miss any of the uploads in this series. In total, we're going to have over 920 custom made recruits, over 42 recruiting classes. This isn't just a simulation, it's the most ambitious NCAA football series ever tried on YouTube. It's going to be spanning 7 parts and 28 hours to get through all 42 seasons. And this video is going to be part 4 of this series. In parts 1 through 3, we went from the year 1980 all the way through the 1999 season. Then in this video, we will be going for 6 seasons from 2000 to 2005. All right, guys, welcome to part four of my college football reset. Now, this is going to be the year 2000, and this is going to be uh, like our 21st, I think, season of The Sims. So we're almost halfway through this thing. Like I say in the intro, this is going to be the biggest college football video series you will ever see on YouTube. I, I Maybe I'll come up with something bigger eventually, but it's the biggest that's ever been done so far. We're going to track all the recruiting. I have real life recruiting classes for each season. Now it is in an old NCAA game. And in this game, you can max create 23 recruits in a season. So that is what I do. I make 23 recruits. The rest are auto generated, but you're going to see a real life players just spread through all throughout college football. We have all of our coaches. Now, at the start of the sim, I had 24 coaches, I believe. A bunch have got fired, retired, whatever. Um, so I think we're down to like 15, so like nine or so we have lost. So this is where everyone is right now. Barry Alvarez started at Wisconsin. He's now the head coach at Boise State. Bobby Bowden started as the head coach at Florida State went back to Florida State after getting fired, went back, got fired again. He's now the DC at Michigan. Mac Brown is OC at UCF, was at Texas before. Pete Carroll's now the head coach at uh, Colorado. He was obviously USC. Jim Harbaugh is the offense coordinator at Georgia. He was the head coach at Stanford is where I put him at. And then he's moved around. Woody Hayes has been at Ohio State the whole time. So he's never been fired. You can see his career record right there. And he so far has two national championships to his name. We have Lou Holtz, who won two national championships, a really good record at Notre Dame, but got fired. He now is the head coach at Tulane. We have Don James, UW's coach. He got fired at UW. He's the OC at Nevada. Jimmy Johnson, been at uh, the U the whole time. He's got six conference championships. He's won a national championship. There's his record, 211 and 59. Chip Kelly's bounced around a little bit. I had him at Oregon. He's now at Bowling Green. He's been a head coach at a few spots. Urban Meyer has been at Florida the whole time. He's won two natties 10 times. He's won the SEC. Him, Woody Hayes, there's it. Uh, Jimmy have been three of the best coaches by far. We have Robert Nealon. This is actually his second go around as the head coach at uh, Tennessee. He got fired, left, came back. He's safe right now, but hasn't been great. Ed Orgeron, I had him at LSU. He got fired. 
Tom Osborne has been safe at Nebraska the whole time. He has no national championships. I believe they've made a national championship game, though, and they have had some conference championship wins. Joe Paw started at, uh, obviously, Penn State. He did get fired there, but he did win a national championship at, uh, at Penn State. He's now at Stanford. We have Gary Patterson, who started at TCU as the head coach. Um, he had a pretty good record there. Uh, he got fired, though, and now he's at Hawaii. Uh, we have Nick Saban. He's had a lot of head coaching jobs. He's got a, basically a 500 record, got fired at Bama, has not really been that good so far. Bo Schembechler, he used to be at Michigan, got fired there. Now Penn State hired him. Uh, then we have Howard Schnellenberger, who was at Louisville for a long time, just recently got fired. Now he's at Georgia Tech. We have Kirby Smart, who's been at Georgia the whole time. He has taken home a national championship. We got Steve Spurrier, who's basically got fired at South Carolina after a few years and just been an OC for a while. This is Dabo. So Dabo got fired at Clemson. He's bounced around. And now he's just got hired this year as the new head coach at Alabama. So that will be super interesting to see if he could have a, a resurgence in the second half of the sim. Barry Switzer, Barry at Oklahoma the whole time three-time national champion Kyle Whittingham started at Utah was there for quite a while did get fired he's at South Florida right now and that is it so we did have like nine or ten guys who actually retired so we're gonna track all the coaching we're gonna kind of follow along with that then we also have the rosters. So we'll look at the rosters really quick. Actually, you know what? We'll look at the recruits and we'll look at the rosters at the start of the year, kind of how I usually do it. So this is going to be the 2000 recruiting class. Now, I've already made the class. We are going to get into this. Uh, then we'll look at the rosters after. So this is a really good class. There's some really cool players like NFL Hall of Famers, just all pro level players. So first up, we have Philip Rivers. He's from Alabama, obviously played with North Carolina State, um, played forever for the chargers really good career he's looking at florida alabama notre dame ohio state we have eli manning obviously eli we all know who eli is he played at ole miss um he's looking at florida bama notre dame georgia we have big ben roethlisberger from ohio played at miami of ohio but he probably won't be going there looking like ohio state kentucky notre dame or tennessee and then our last one is brock berlin who is a really high recruit um out of louisiana he played it uh for the u and I wanted to include him because he was a big, big time recruit in college. And these are the schools he's looking at. Okay, we go down to running backs. We got two. We got first Steven Jackson, one at just an all time scary running back at Oregon State and then in the NFL for the Rams. He's from Nevada. He's looking at LSU, AM, Mizzou, Arkansas, Bama. And then the other one is Michael Turner. Now, Turner played at a small school, Northern Illinois, but, you know, really good in the NFL with the uh, Chargers and Falcons. He's looking at Oklahoma, Ohio State, Miami, Florida, Georgia. Go down to wideouts. We got three wide receivers. We have Reggie Williams, who played at UW. He's from Cali. Top 10 pick. Uh, not really good in the NFL, but was like big time athlete. 6'4", 220, can run. He's looking at U USC, UCLA, Cal, and Stanford. We got Jericho Cotri. Now, he's from Alabama. He played at North Carolina State. Really good career in the NFL with like uh, the Jets, a few other teams. He's looking at Bama, Florida, Georgia, Mississippi State, Tennessee. And then our other one is Lee Evans. Played for the Bills from Ohio. Actually played at Wisconsin. Uh, was like a first round pick, I'm pretty sure. Super fast, kind of small, speedy guy but can move around the field. He's looking at Ohio State, Notre Dame, Miami of Ohio, Penn State, Georgia. We go down to our tight ends. First, we have Kellen Winslow. Oh, this is supposed to be Kellen Winslow Jr. I forgot to put the junior in there, but Kellen Winslow Jr. played at the U on those really good 01 Miami teams. He's looking at Georgia, Florida, LSU, Vandy, Miami. We got Benjamin Watson, who played a, a long time in the NFL, played a ton with the Patriots, Saints. Uh, he went to Georgia. He's from Virginia. He's looking at Georgia, Florida, Tennessee, LSU, a and M. Go down to offensive line. We just have one. It's uh, Robert Gallery. He's from Iowa. Played uh, for the University of Iowa. 6'7", 320. He was like a top 10 pick by the Raiders. He's looking at Florida, Ohio State, Georgia, Miami, Oklahoma. Move down to defensive ends. We got one D end. It is Jared Allen. Nasty with like the Chiefs, Vikings in the NFL. Uh, led the league in sacks a few times, I believe. He played at a small school. It was Idaho State, but right now he's a five-star. He's looking at Cal, UCLA, Stanford, USC. Go to D-Tackle. We got Tommy Harris. He's from Texas, but he played for Oklahoma. Big-time player uh, looking at Texas A&M, TCU, Baylor, um, SMU. We got Darnell Dockett. He played at Florida State, played really long time in the NFL, played with the Cardinals. Uh, he's looking at Maryland, Penn State, Virginia, Virginia Tech, Navy, Notre Dame. 
So kind of staying in that Maryland area. Moving on to linebackers. We are an outside linebacker, DJ Williams. He played at the University of uh, Miami. He's from Cali, though. He is, I believe he is like the number one player in the class coming out. He was like not incredible at college, but he was good. He's looking at Bama, Florida, LSU, AM, Notre Dame, SC. Uh, moving on, we got two middle linebackers. Jonathan Vilma, part of that really nasty 01 team for the U. He's looking at Florida, Miami, Georgia, and Vanderbilt. And then the other one's Carlos Dansby. He played at Auburn. He's from Alabama. Uh, played with the Cardinals in the NFL. He's looking at Florida, Penn State, Georgia Tech, UC. UCLA, Iowa. Go down to corner and we got three. First, D'Angelo Hall. He's from Virginia, played for Virginia Tech, was a really high pick by the Falcons in the NFL, also played with the Skins. Crazy athlete, super fast. He's looking at Bama, Florida, Ohio State, Miami, Michigan. We got Bryant McFadden. Now, McFadden played for Florida State. He's from the state. He's looking at Florida, Miami, Alabama, Georgia. Then our last is Chris Gamble. He played at Ohio State, but he is from Florida. He, uh, long, long career too. He look, he's looking at Florida, Miami, Miami, Texas SC. Then we have two safeties and they are two good ones. First, Sean Taylor, part of that, you know, 01 Miami team. He's looking at Florida, Texas, Miami, SC, Ohio State. It is going to be, that's a huge recruit wherever he goes. And then we do have a strong safety as well. Bob Sanders, you'll remember him playing for the Colts. Uh, I think he won Defensive Player of the Year one year for the Colts, or if not, he was close. He's from Pennsylvania, but he played at Iowa. Just an absolute bowling ball at safety. He's looking at Ohio State, Penn State, Notre Dame, Florida, LSU. So that's the recruiting class for this year, guys. We're going to follow along. We're going to see where those guys end up. We'll check in the middle of the season and then at National Signing Day, see where those guys end up okay now we're gonna look at some rosters first and then you, and then we're gonna look at like the top 25 highs and watch uh, maybe we'll look at that first this is how i usually do it this is the start of a new episode so but i i will look at this top 25 highs and watch look at our all americans then we'll look at the individual roster so last year florida beat oklahoma in the national championship so florida was able to take home their second national championship of the sim they're an a plus they've been probably them and ohio state i would say have been the most consistent guys over the 20 years just the most consistent teams like always in the mix notre dame was incredible for about the first 15 years of the sim but they fired lou holtz and they have taken a bit of a nosedive they're they're good still but i don't think they're going to win a natty anytime soon so we do have florida 97 or overall they're first in the country we got oklahoma they're 95 georgia 93 ohio state also a 97 like florida miami a 97 miami looks really good this year we'll look at the rosters here like i said in a minute notre dame looks decent lsu looks pretty good maryland looks okay ucla looks okay army cal looks pretty good UCLA CF looks decent, Penn State, Colorado, Nebraska, Mississippi State's got some talent, Arkansas has got some talent, um, SC is kind of meh, Clemson, do we have any really uh, A- minus for Texas, Texas has just been very meh, Texas and USC have been, to and Michigan, total letdowns throughout the sim, they just have not been able to put it together, you know, look at the Heisman watch right now, so we have Donovan McNabb, he's a senior for Mississippi State, he's leading the way, he's been really good for, he's, this is going to be his fourth year starting at Mississippi State, we have Dante Cole pepper who's the reigning heisman trophy winner from last year he's only a sophomore or he's only a junior he was a sophomore last year at uh, miami and they are stacked he could easily win back-to-back -back heismans we have tim couch only a, a junior for florida defending national champions really good these three are all in really good positions to put up huge years this year yeah i would not be shocked if any guys guys won the heisman for sure so mcnab first team um we got matt light on the o-line leonard davis at lsu uh here's the rest of the list nate clements at uh penn state if we go second team all americans we got tim couch uh kevin falk at lsu has been pretty uh, really good the last two years donald driver at arkansas steve hutchinson at the u uh andre carter for arkansas has been good arkansas has got three like elite level players dan morgan at maryland philip buchanan at the u he's first team or yeah second team all american he's a freshman last year uh, yeah, so that's kind of our All-Americans. Other thing I like to look at right at the start of the year is our conference champions. So, our, our sorry, championship contenders. So this just kind of looks at the rosters going forward and projects 
who they, you know, who the computer kind of thinks is going to be the best teams. So right now they have Florida, you know, they've been consistently right near the top one, one, three, three, Nebraska, not as good this year, but then starts to like really shoot up Miami. They're on like a two year window. They, where they look nasty. Texas looks like they're actually going to maybe go on a bit of a run here. Maybe Ohio state, always right near the top. Oklahoma has been absolutely really consistent as well. LSU, pretty good. Bama looks like they're not great this year, but they are on a bit of an upkeep tick. Georgia kind of, you know, staying around that level. We can also just kind of sort by contender grades. This kind of takes it all. Florida, Oklahoma, Georgia, Ohio State, Miami, LSU, Nebraska are kind of the top level teams over the next four years. Okay, so now we're going to look at some rosters here. And I just kind of like to go through uh, they got Richard Seymour at Bama. We'll do a bit more of a deep dive here just because this is the start of a new episode. Arkansas is looking really good. I don't look at every team as well. And I try to mention this in every episode, guys. There's 126 teams in college football, uh, roughly, in this game. I try to keep each of these episodes four hours. I, I cannot keep track of every team. We're not going to get to see every team or every player. I basically think of it like you're when you're watching a college football show, they are going to focus on the big major teams. If you watch college game day, anything like that they're basically going to focus on the top 10 15 teams for the majority of the time because they just don't have enough time to touch on all 120 teams and the best teams are going to be inherently more interesting so if you're like mad that i kind of focus on the blue buds i want to see the best teams and the best players because that's the most of the real life players and who's going to be performing the best so just like uh you know thing at the top but anyway getting into arkansas they have kind of three studs they have andre carter lt and uh donald driver so they played florida in the sec championship game just on the back of those three they could do some damage their qb is not great though so really gonna have to ride lt going down clemson has just not been very good cal actually they just had tom brady last year they were able to get joey harrington uh they, they've actually been recruiting really well the last few years so i would not be shocked to see cal go on a bit of a run here uh clemson like i said yeah hasn't been great colorado they have pete carroll not not incredible uh florida this is consistently guys the best recruiting team consistently if you look at their qb room right now they have tim couch as a junior they just got byron leftwich last year in recruiting they have clinton portis they have willis mcgahey at running back they also have dante stallworth who i accidentally made a running back when i was creating them he's actually a wide receiver but that's their running back room their receivers, look at this, 98, 97, 94, 93, 93, 89. So they have this Rollins who's a senior. They have Santana Moss and Chad Johnson as juniors. Nice tight ends. Uh, if we go look at defense too. At free safety, they have Ed Reed, only a sophomore. They have a good cornerback room. Their defense actually is kind of low-key, not as good as it has been the last few years. Their front seven is just kind of okay. They have Javon Curse, who's like their big just kind of game wrecker. But Florida has just been consistent consistently an incredible recruiting team and always near the top florida state has done basically nothing the whole time georgia has always been around they have won one national championship they got like julius peppers they got chris jenkins champ bailey they have some big time players on defense obviously the qb position they were really good for about the first 10 years of the sim haven't had that elite level qb for the last bit though like they were really good at qb they had just a string of huge qb recruits look at lsu they're really kind of on up upswing here. They got a good quarterback for this year. Kevin Falk at running back this year. Good group of receivers. They just got Charles Rogers, a big time freshman. Um, Leonard Davis on the O-line. They're, they're pretty good for sure. Now, getting into Miami. This is, they are very top heavy, but at the top, they are sick. Patrick Kearney at the end, Edron James at running back, Dante Culpepper, and Joey Porter. Those four alone, you could easily win a national championship cole pepper's got good, decent weapons they just got anquan bolden they have a bunch of like junior receivers who are just going to get better they got edrin james just for one more year they have two just six senior running backs so miami definitely has a chance to win their second natty of the sim Michigan, another team, like I said, been kind of just underwhelming, never really done much. Nebraska has been consistently around. They have a junior. They have another sophomore coming in at QB. Uh, the, the projection really likes them over the next few years. Uh, wide receiver. They have Steve Smith. They have Dion Branch. They just don't really throw the ball. I also, with the coaches, tried to match them up with the type of scheme they ran in real life. So I make 
I made uh, Nebraska really run heavy under Tom Osborne, running kind of an option offense. So they're very run heavy. Same with Oklahoma. They're, they both play that kind of style with the Oklahoma having Barry Switzer. Now, Notre Dame, like I said, is on a downturn, especially at QB. They probably, even more than Florida, have recruited me. Them and Florida are close, but I'd say they've actually recruited quarterback the best. And they do not have a quarterback anymore. They have some sick wide receivers. They have Reggie Wayne and Corin Robinson. They do have still talent but not like it was in the 80s and the early 90s they were incredible probably the best recruiting team florida has been the most consistent but top level i'd say notre dame was the best especially first five six years how state's been the other team that's been really good throughout they just got uh they have josh mccown only a sophomore right now gonna start for them they got deuce McAllister and larry johnson at running back haven't really got that big time wide receiver recruit but if you look like they have dre bly marcus stroud casey C. Hampton, Deuce, um, Matt Light on the O-line, John Henderson at D-tackle. Like their D-tackle room is sick. So this team, once again, is going to be definitely national title contenders. Same with Oklahoma. They have 99 QB. Uh, they have this sophomore that they're developing. Terrence Branch looks like he's going to be good. Really good, just deep running back room. Really good wide receiver. They have David Boston right now. They just got Brandon Lloyd as a freshman. Really young. Their receiving core last year was unreal, but a lot of them graduated. Jeremy Shockey at tight end. You know, they've just been very consistent as well. Albert Hainsworth on the D line. Bryant McKinney at offensive line. So OU's been really good so far. Penn State won a natty. They made another one. They've been okay, uh, but since they fired Joe Paul, they have Dwight Freeney. They they just haven't been great. Keep going down. Syracuse. Now they uh, they just had uh, Peyton Manning two years ago. He is gone now, but uh, yeah, they've actually done a pretty good job of recruiting, like considering their school. Uh, Tennessee hasn't really been doing much the whole sim. Texas, once again, they, they, they're they good always, but they're not like, they've never made a natty, never even really been on the doorstep. Now, AM was super interesting. I didn't have one of our custom coaches on AM, and in the 80s and early 90s, they were incredible. They still had Jimbo Fisher. I didn't like switch all the coaches, right? I just made the 24 kind of. So they had Jimbo Fisher, and they won four national titles in the first like 12 years. But once they lost Jimbo, they have totally fallen off like it was them and notre dame were the two best teams of the sim for about the first 15 years uh keep going down ucla just went on a crazy run in the late 90s they made four straight national championships only were able to win one in 1998 but they made four straight they're pretty good they have david carr they've recruited well they're not like you know they got Troy Polamalu. They're a good overall team who, yeah, could easily make at least one more natty over the sim for sure. USC been pretty disappointing throughout. They've actually had a lot of pretty good players, but right now they're at a very low point, it looks like. Uh, and yeah, that is kind of our big team. So that is what the rosters are looking like guys we've kind of looked over everything so now what i like to do is i'm going to sim till week nine then we're going to look at the top 25 we'll kind of see where everyone's at then i'll find us a good matchup either late in the year or in a conference championship game we'll watch that and then we'll kind of sim through we'll see how everyone's doing and then we'll watch the national championship as well and we're going to take a look at recruiting okay so now we're in week nine guys we're going to look at the recruits right here see where everyone is kind of leaning at this point so Oh, Philip Rivers looking at Middle Tennessee, Florida, or Nebraska. So that's an interesting group of schools. Florida's, oh my God, Eli might go to Florida, Texas Tech, AM, Ole Miss. Florida just got Byron Leftwich last year, so that could be crazy. Then Big Ben, Western Kentucky or Michigan. I hope he goes to Michigan. That'd be kind of cool, honestly. And then Brock Berlin looking like AM, most likely. Go to running back. We got Steven Jackson, UNLV or AM, maybe Bama. Michael Turner locked in at Oklahoma. That's a big pickup for OU. I like that fit. Uh, wide receiver Reggie Williams leaning Washington like in real life. Then we got UCLA, Cal, and USC. We got Jericho Cottry, who played, uh, who's looking at Bama. He's from Alabama. That makes sense. Also, Florida and Mississippi State. And then Lee Evans, who's looking at Penn State. 
uh, Miami of Ohio and Ohio State. Going to tight end, Kellen Winslow Jr. Leaning Miami, maybe Notre Dame, LSU, or Georgia. Ben, Big Ben Watson is looking at Georgia, Tennessee, maybe JMU. Uh, gallery looking like Oklahoma, Georgia, or Miami. Defensive end, Jared Allen walked in at Cal. That's a big pickup for them. D tackle, Tommy Harris looking like Baylor, TCU, Texas, SMU. Darnell Dockett, Navy, Maryland, Vautech. DJ Williams looking like Florida or LSU. That's a big pickup for either of them. Jonathan Vilma, UAB, Florida or Ole Miss, maybe Western Kentucky. That's interesting. Dansby looking like UCLA or Florida. Florida or UCLA, that would be big for both. I mean, if you see how they got Troy Polamalu last year, they got Jared Allen this year. If they got Dansby too, that's kind of a wild defense they could be building. D'Angelo Hall locked in at Ohio State. Huge pickup there. Bryant McFadden locked in at Florida. Chris Gamble looking like Miami or LSU or Texas. Okay, I'm very interested at the safeties, especially this free safety. If Sean Taylor goes to Florida with Ed Reed. Okay, so Miami of Ohio or Florida. Maybe Cincinnati. I kind of I hope he goes to Florida, not Miami of Ohio. And then Bob Sanders goes to Notre Dame. It's a huge pickup for Notre Dame on their back end of their defense. So that's kind of where the recruiting is. Not going to look at that again till National Signing Day, though. Okay, looking at the top 25 here. Let's see how our teams are doing. So Miami, 6-0. UCLA, 6-0. Nebraska, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Army, Baylor. All 6-0 right now. Florida, a loss. Georgia, Purdue, uh, no losses. TCU, Mississippi State. Kind of want to... Mississippi State might be a fun team to watch. They have like no really big games left. UCF, USC. Okay, what about Miami? Who do they play? Nothing major. A lot of the time, I'll just wait till a conference championship game unless something really big pops out. Yeah, nothing there. What about OU? Nothing. Tennessee. I, I can't imagine Tennessee staying undefeated. Florida. Who did they lose to? They lost to Tennessee. Okay. Georgia Vandy. Oh, they played Georgia this week. That's a big game. That's the only one I'm debating. Who's on Georgia? Both one loss, but I think we might as well just wait and check out the conference championship and see if one of those teams makes it there. So right now, Tim Couch leading the way. Once again, and one other thing, guys, I'm controlling Air Force in this sim, but I literally just simulate. I do not recruit. I don't do anything. So like I, I literally don't touch anything. So my QB right now, he's an 82 overall, somehow second in the Heisman. Oh, one team we forgot to look at. Michael Vick went to Vanderbilt and he's actually third in the Heisman race right now. 68 rushing yards a game, Edron James. But right now, Tim Couch for Florida is leading the way. That's pretty huge for Florida. You know, they've consistently just put up crazy numbers through the air and like huge just offensive stats. Uh, passing leaders, Mitchell, Tim Couch uh, leading the way there. There's the running back leaders, Kevin Falk and Edron James on the list. Uh, Donald Driver, third in the country in receiving yards. There's tackles and there's sacks and there's interceptions. Look at some team stats really quick. So total offense right now, it's Florida, LSU, Miami of Ohio. I don't know what they're up to, but they're putting up yards. Georgia, Tennessee points per game. It's Oklahoma, Florida, Baylor, Air Force, Tennessee. If we look at defense um, points, Army, Memphis, UCLA, TCU, Miami. So that's kind of where we're sitting right now. So I think we're just going to sim until conference championship weekend. And then we'll just kind of see and we'll watch one of the conference championship games. All right. So here we are. Conference championship weekend. Going to look at our top. Oh my God. Is that UCLA undefeated again? They just got to beat Washington. They're going to be in it. Baylor might be in automatically. Florida is going to have to beat AM and then jump Baylor or hope UCLA loses. This would be five national championship appearances in six years. Maybe if Miami beats Notre Dame. I'm not loving this Baylor 12 and 0. I don't think they're a great team. Uh, they beat Oklahoma two weeks ago, though, or Oklahoma would have been right here. Wow. Okay. So AM Florida is probably the best game. UCLA Washington. Washington's not great. I, I can't see let's just simulate that ucla game yeah ucla kills washington so ucla is in probably against baylor because big 12 in this doesn't have a, na a conference championship game and i don't think i can do anything about that so it's kind of unfortunate but uh 
is what it is. We'll watch this Texas A&M Florida game. This Florida team's really good, obviously. A ton of our guys on it. So yeah, it'll be fun to check them out. So this is where we sit. Florida number one offense in the country with a bullet. They are explosive. Uh, A&M's pretty bound. So nice defense, really nice offense. Yeah. I mean, A&M will give these guys all they can handle. That's their stats for the year right now. 44 total touchdowns for Couch. That's their guys. So looks like their QB might be injured for A&M. Yeah, he's out for the season. Clinton Portis, broken ribs. Looks like he's going to play, though. But UCLA, this if UCLA wins, this will be their third win of the sim. They did win one, I believe, in the 80s as well. Um, and then they won one in 1998. So they're going to be in there, and we'll see. We'll see if Florida gets a big win here, if they're able to jump Baylor. But I doubt it. With no losses for Baylor, we're just going to sim through the first quarter here, first and 10. This is uh, Florida's up 13-0, but he, uh, Texas A&M does score. Second and 10, third and 12 here. Let's see if uh, Florida's got an answer. Big third and long. Tim Couch in at QB. He's got Santana Moss, Clinton Portis, Chad Ocho Cinco with him. So he's going to hand it off to Portis. Hate that freaking call. And Portis is going to go down. And AM going to get the football back. Minus two, third and 12. They're going to punt to Florida. Third and four. They're going to punt. They're neat. Let's see what this Florida defense can do. They got big Javon Curse is kind of their big weapon. Then they got Ed Reed on the back end for Florida. Not the, their best uh, defensive personnel. They used to have some crazy defenses. Ooh, just short. Fourth and one there. Florida, big stop. Throw away. One yard. Fourth and three. Okay, we're going to sim through the rest of this quarter here. It's going kind of slow. So AM gets stopped. Florida goes down and scores. And AM kicks a field goal to end the half. So we have a 10 point Florida lead. Third and three. AM driving. Second and five. Third and two. Let's watch this play. Third and two for AM here. Touchdown. That gets them down to a three point game. So obviously, right in striking distance. You're going to hand it off. Going to get that first down for AM. Okay. Touchdown. Okay. So it's a three point game. Florida's got to do something on offense here. Riding Clinton Portis there. They are running the football. First and 10, second and three. First and goal from the six. Okay. Let's watch Florida from here. Trying to put it back up to two scores. They got to punch it in, though, if they uh, if they want to do that, obviously. Couch going to be in a little pump fake as like a drag. He's going to throw that out the back of the end zone. Okay, let's watch this next play here. Trips to the top. Going to hand it off to Portis. Nothing. Do it. Oh, he fumbled. He fumbled. And AM picks it up. Florida's going to get no points out of that. AM driving here. Second and 10. Third and 14. They get it to fourth and three. They're going to have to punt, though. Clinton Rollins. Third and 15 here for the Gators. They are playing for, with fire with this AM team. If they blew them out, they would have had a chance, I think, to jump Baylor, but I, I don't think they probably will now. Okay, drops back. Tim Couch bouncing on his toes. He's going to launch this. A moon ball jump ball picked. Couch gets picked. I don't really. Oh, that's Nomdi Osamwa. They have a true freshman Nomdi Osamwa out there with the pick. And now AM. Oh, but they get stopped and they go for it and get shut down. Second and five, third and one, first and 10, and they score a touchdown. Chad Johnson. Okay, so Chad, big go-ahead touchdown. They have to punt there. AM fourth and four. Florida punts. Third and five, fourth and four. AM punts. And then a couple of huge passes down the field. First and five, second and 12, third and 15 again. I mean, yeah, this one's basically over. Um, we'll watch this play and then we'll just probably super sim through the rest. They're up 10 with 234 left. Style points do matter for Florida. I mean, they need, they want to make the natty. Play UCLA. Portis breaks a tackle there. Able to get, you know, a good six, seven yards, but they are going to punt this away. We're just going to sim through this one unless something crazy happens. Oh, they went for it. Okay, so they were going for style points there. I didn't even realize that. They ended up going for that on fourth down, picking it up. They score a late touchdown. Maybe that's enough to get past Baylor. They definitely would have played a harder schedule. Baylor did just beat Oklahoma two weeks ago. I wish they had a Big 12 championship in this, but yeah, so they, they play one less game, so it's kind of easier for them to make it if they're undefeated. Uh, so Tim Couch, four touchdowns, 284. Portis, 133 on the ground. Couch, they ran a lot as well. Uh, Rollins had a big day. He's got Santana and uh, Chad. Chad had two touchdowns on the day. 
a and uh, not really a ton of our guys, honestly, on offense. Yeah, but they have a true freshman playing quarterback, 77 overall. He made the SEC championship game, so he did something, right? Okay, we are going to sim through. I'm assuming it's probably going to be Baylor, but uh, I'm kind of hoping Florida sneaks in just because uh, Florida UCLA is probably a more fun game to watch, but uh, we'll see. This UCLA run is crazy. They literally made it in 1995 loss 96 loss 97 lost 98 loss no 98 won finally then florida made beat oklahoma last year now ucla is going to make it again this year okay tim couch one other thing guys is I, i'm going to do players and coaches of each decade so i i kind of mentioned it in the intro and i if you've watched other videos you know other in the series but uh so leave comments on players who you think have really stood out like right now tim couch when you factor in he's just won a heisman he won an addy last year if he comes back next year and puts up some crazy stats he could definitely look at like a player of the 2000s decades if you kind of include the 1999 season in with that which i don't have an issue doing edron james gets uh third mike vick gets uh fifth in the heisman voting definitely ucla and it is baylor it is baylor Florida Florida plays Oklahoma. That's a rematch of the Natty last year. Georgia, Notre Dame, Arkansas, Nebraska, two losses. Tennessee only had two losses. So here it is. We got Baylor, UCLA, national championship. Um, maybe we'll quick take a quick look at Baylor. I, I've literally no idea who's on their team. Running back. Yeah, they're not great, but uh, hey, they made the dance. Oh, and their QB's injured. I don't even know if he's playing. Oh my goodness. This might be a route for UCLA. We'll see. UCLA is good. But honestly, UCLA is good, but they're not like OP this year. They have a, oh, they have date. Okay. They have young David Carr. Ah, uh, you know, first overall pick by the Houston Texans, starting for them as a freshman. They, they're a pretty run heavy offense. They play like triple option as well. So uh yeah they uh they're, they're not crazy on offense. They do have some good defensive players. Troy Polamalu starting for them as a freshman really good safeties or secondary is honestly nasty nice middle linebacker so honestly i think defensively is where they're actually really good this year oh my god their d tackles are insanely bad so they probably play some defensive ends in at linebacker or d tackle because they have good ends but that is what we're looking like we're gonna do baylor ucla now i'm probably gonna go through this game pretty quick just because these first seasons of each episode take a little bit longer because I have to do kind of the whole intro, kind of recapping a little bit of what's happening. And these are not two of our like big teams with a bunch of our real life players. So we'll go through this one a little bit quicker. Yeah, UCLA, look at their defense. First, first, second, first. So by far the best defense in the country. Baylor's very balanced. So good on O, good on defense. There's their top players. Let's see if Baylor's QB's playing. His QB's, they're starting quarterbacks out as well really probably should have put in florida into this game but uh there it is okay we're gonna sim through the first quarter here ucla goes up three nothing ucla goes up 10 nothing baylor almost drives okay they go 10 three ucla driving again though man this ucla run game we got a third and eight here. I just can't believe UCLA's made five of the last six national championship games. This is insane. They're trying to win their third of the sim too. That times like Oklahoma. AM has the most with four, but uh yeah. Okay, car drops back, steps up, delivers. Oh, that should have been picked by Baylor. They do hold them to three, but that could have been an absolutely massive play. Okay, let's keep simming here. Oh, they miss their field goal, but they get the ball back and they go score 17 3. Yeah, this is, especially with Baylor's QB being, being injured, this was maybe not going to be the best game. Um, They're driving here, trying to go. They do get first and goal, second and goal. They score. Okay, I mean, 23 10 is okay, and they get a stop. If Baylor scores here, who freaking knows? Third and two, fourth and 10. Oh, they go for it, third and seven. They get first and goal from the seven, and they score. Okay, 23 17. I probably should have watched some of those plays, but. Okay, third and five here for UCLA. And all of a sudden, I mean, 6.06 left. You got to score a stop here at Baylor. You could go down and take the lead. Got David Carr under center here in his kind of wishbone UCLA offense. Let's see what happens. Motion. Drops back, hands it off, and he's short. And the Baylor Bears are alive. A few years ago in 96, UCLA lost to Memphis in the national championship game. So... You know, you never know what's going to happen in these. Third and six, though, here for Baylor. So they need a conversion here. 503 left. 
Got trips to the bottom. Drops back. Looks like they're setting up a screen pass. Oh my god. Homie got absolutely rocked on that play. Five yard, first and 10, second and 12, third and eight. Yeah, this one's basically over. We'll watch one more play and then we'll probably just sim through. Uh, even a field goal here puts it at a two possession game with three minutes left under three minutes um, But let's see if Carr can get a big conversion This is gonna be a national championship if they hold on for Carr as a sophomore for UCLA or the Bruins winning their third natty of the sim What was the uh, first year they won it? Oh, okay, that could have been dangerous um UCLA, UCLA won in 1989 and then again in 1998. And now they're on the precipice of winning in 2000. They do hit their field goal. So now it's a two score game. I uh, will just go till the end. Okay, Baylor scores. Oh, but UCLA, okay, yeah, UCLA, yeah. There it is. So UCLA gets it done. This is not the most celebratory thing, but there it is. So UCLA wins their freaking fourth or third national championship of the sim tying oklahoma i think notre dame has three maybe or maybe they just have two but yeah there we go kind of a surprising season but uh yeah i mean they came in with an 81 quarterback couldn't get their run game going they honestly passed it decent uh ucla didn't even try to really throw the ball it was the run game for them uh, just real. Oh my God. 121, 38, 90, and 64. So they just ran rough shot all over Baylor and they take it home in this 2000 season. Okay. So here we are at the end of the season. So we'll just kind of look at all our stuff to wrap up the 2000 season. So UCLA, number one team, Baylor, uh, Florida, Georgia, Nebraska, Oklahoma, USC, Tennessee. Um, Heisman, we already seen. We'll look at the All Americans. So, uh, Mitchell, the QB from Miami, uh, then Edron James from Real Miami, uh, Andre Johnson. He got, he went to, holy crap, he had 1400 yards, won the Bolitnikov, 21 touchdowns as a true freshman. Holy crap, that is insane. They were just throwing the ball all over the yard there. Wow, Hutchinson gets it, Chris Jenkins for Georgia. Dre Bly. Bly, that's back to back years. For, oh, no. No, never mind. That's uh, someone else I'm thinking of. Okay, second team. Tim Couch gets second team, even though he won the Heisman. Santana Moss, 1,000 yards, 16 touchdowns. Andre Carter, he's, he's nine and a half. He's 22 sacks in three years for Arkansas. He's been great. Curse ended up with only 10 sacks in his career. Uh, did get second team All American, though, this year, obviously. Uh, looking at freshmen, Carson Palmer at Bama, 2,200 yards, 18 touchdowns, 11 picks. Andre, we already looked at, insane, gross on the O-line. Uh, Robert Mathis from Middle Tennessee, five and a half sacks. Nomdi Osamoa, a and five picks, and we've seen one of his picks. Charles Tillman for Oklahoma had two picks. Troy Polamalu, UCLA, national championship in his first year. Uh, didn't really have a crazy stats. But, oh, Anquan Bolden is a returner for Miami. Pretty good, pretty good numbers. Now we'll kind of just look at uh, passing leader. So Mitchell by far led the country in passing. Uh, Vic fourth, Tim Couch third. Uh, second, there's our rushing leaders, Kevin Falk, fifth. Receiving leaders, Donald Driver, Andre Johnson right there. Tackles, sacks, and INTs. Bly, I didn't even notice that. He had nine picks this year for Ohio State. That is insane. Uh, we'll look at team stats really quick. Total offense, Florida, Miami. Uh, points, Florida, Miami. Other Miami, Penn State, Oklahoma. UCLA, number one in yards. Number one in points. They had a wicked defense this year. Absolutely wicked. Okay, other thing I like to do at the end of each season, guys, is we'll just look at some of the big players. This is how I kind of make sure we kind of get a track on who, how each player did at least through their career. So how did Culpepper won the Heisman last year? Uh, he had honestly very similar yards. Miami maybe just didn't have his go. He rushed for less, but okay. How'd McNabb do in his last? Oh, McNabb got injured. It looks like they might've changed their offense a little bit. He kind of had a down last year. Oh, he did get injured. Ellison at Oklahoma. Uh, they like to run the ball up. Vic, he had a good year. 40 touchdowns, had another nine on the ground. Really good year for him. Really good start to his career for Vic. Uh, Drew Brees, 
Uh, North Texas, 37 touchdowns. Tui, 40 touchdowns, five picks. He should be able to run you. 744 on the ground as well. So we got some good QBs in college football right now. Running backs. Falk, we already looked at. Edrin, uh, good freshman and good final year. His middle years were, I think he got hurt actually his junior year. LT is going to be back for one more. Only 1,100 yards this year. Wasn't like crazy. Deuce McAllister, 858 at Ohio State. Wasn't great. Wideouts, Torrey Holt, Mississippi State, 1,200 yards this year as a, a senior. That's pretty good. Steve Smith ends up going to Nebraska. They're such a run-heavy team. Not a great fit for him. Donald Driver has backed uh, 1,400 yards this year, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. A.J. Collins, back-to-back uh, -back really good years for Florida. David Boston for Oklahoma, not crazy. Reggie Wayne is a junior, just about 1,000. Uh, yeah, Chad, uh, 742. He's been their third option, though, in the passing game. Algie Crumpler for Wake Forest. I thought he went to Virginia. Randy. I don't know. Jeremy Shockey, how'd he do for OU this year? Only 228. Didn't do much. Uh, ends, Joey Porter. Miami finished with 16 and a half sacks over his career. Richard Seymour, he's at, uh, he had seven and a half sacks for Bama this year. What about Julius Peppers? seven sacks on his career right now javon curse didn't really do crazy stats same with kearney decent not insane justin smith for texas still one more year d tackle booger mcfarland for vandy good career for him chris jenkins uh, all american this year hampton and for ohio state along with stroud okay left outside i don't know if we have any big ones middle dan morgan for maryland that's his stats right outside nothing major corner champ bailey senior year this year he finishes with 10 ints on his career antoine winfield for michigan uh eight ints 37 pass deflections chris McAllister, 19 pass deflections seven picks dre Bly only had two picks before this year and then had nine this year nate clements had five picks so far i think he's got one more year left though free safety ed reed only a sophomore and already the best free safety in the country that sounds about right. Let's be honest. Strong safety. Uh, Adrian Wilson for North Carolina. That's kind of what he's been doing. So that is our players right now, guys. That's kind of where they are statistically. Okay. Now we're going to go to the off season. We're going to look at National Signing Day. And then uh, we'll take a look at the coaches. We'll see who got fired, who that kind of moved jobs, whatever. And then um, I'll make the next recruiting class and we'll just get into the next season. Oh, one. Okay. National Signing Day. Let's see where all these dudes ended up. So Philip Rivers. Okay. So Philip ends up at Florida huge gap for them they have him and byron leftwich to fight once couch is gone eli goes to a m what a pickup for a m big ben goes to western kentucky brock berlin to the raging cajun so that's our qb situation steven jackson goes to AM. so a m maybe is gonna start climbing again get eli and steven jackson in the same recruiting class michael turner we knew going to oklahoma wide receiver reggie williams ends up at cal uh jericho cautry ends up at florida to team up with philip and then lee evans ends up ohio state nice pickup for them Kellen Winslow ends up at Georgia, and so does Benjamin Watson. So they get the two best tight ends in the class. Huge. Uh, Gallery ends up at Oklahoma. Nice pickup there. The end, we knew Jared Allen at Cal. Uh, Tommy Harris ends up at SMU, and then Darnell Dawkins, Virginia Tech. DJ Williams goes to Florida. Vilma, Western Kentucky. Carlos Dansby goes to Florida. D'Angelo Hall, we knew Ohio State, McFadden, and then Gamble, and then free safety Sean Taylor ends up at Florida. They got him and Ed Reed. Crazy. Uh, and then Bob Sanders, we knew Notre Dame. So Florida killed it on D. Yeah, Florida had a good recruiting class. Really good. Cautry, all those guys on defense, and Phillip Rivers. Oklahoma and Florida had the two best classes along with Nebraska, LSU, Ohio State, Georgia, Cal, UCLA, UCF, and Minnesota. So that is our recruiting class. Really impressed with Florida right right there they they just urban meyer is not missing when it comes to recruiting he just keeps going okay coach info so alvarez staying at boise state bobby bowden uh now dc at michigan mac brown now the oc at uh ucf 
uh pete staying at colorado he's been there for six years now um jim harbaugh still the oc at georgia woody hayes safe at ohio state obviously lou holtz low for Tulane. like go from notre dame to Tulane. Uh, Don James, uh, low security OC at Nevada. Jimmy, obviously safe at uh, Miami. Chip Kelly back at Oregon. Okay. It's weird they're doing this. Like This is like the third or fourth team that fired the coach and then like eight years later hires the exact same guy. So I'm hoping Chip, second go around. Let's, let's improve at Oregon. Let's make them good. Urban Meyer, Obviously safe at Florida. Neyland, once again, this is his second go around. He is safe there. Ed Orgeron, safe as OC at Cal. Tom Osborne, safe at Nebraska. Joe Paw, safe at Stanford. Gary Patterson, safe at Hawaii. Nick Saban got fired. He's now the defensive coordinator at Baylor. Bo Sh like, wow, just tough. Um... Bo Schembechler, safe at head coach at Penn State. Schnellenberger, safe for now at Georgia Tech. Kirby Smart, safe at Georgia. Steve Spurrier, low security at Ole Miss. Dabo on the hot seat after one year at Bama. He is Carson Palmer. You think they should be able, I don't know. I kind of hope Dabo turns it around there. Uh, Barry Switzer, safe at OU. Kyle Whittingham, safe at uh, UCF or USF, South Florida. Uh, and that is it. That is our coaches. So that is where we are at, guys. I'm going to make the next recruiting class and we'll hop into it. All right, guys. So here we are. 01 recruiting class is made. So we're just going to hop right into it. Now, this is another really good class. Pretty balanced. Definitely means pretty offensive heavy, but, you know, good players throughout. Now, quarterback is probably the most interesting position out of any of, the, any of them for this class. First up, we have Aaron Rodgers. Now, Rodgers went to a small school. He went to a Div 2, like, community college before transferring to uh, Cal. Uh, he's from California. He's looking at Florida, Nebraska, UCLA, Miami, Oklahoma. Um, I wouldn't be shocked. I, I kind of hope he doesn't go to UCLA or Nebraska. They're both very run-heavy teams. So very interesting to see where he goes. We got Ryan Fitzpatrick, who obviously went to Harvard, but he is from Arizona. He's looking at Miami of Ohio, USC, Mississippi State, BYU. Uh, then we have Joe Maurer. Now, Joe Maurer was an interesting one I decided to throw in because he was actually like the number one, like top 10 recruit in this 2001 recruiting class. He was going to go to Florida State, but he was also the number one overall pick in baseball and was a Hall of Fame catcher in baseball. So like Florida State, he was like the number one quarterback prospect. So I decided to include him. I thought it'd be kind of cool. So we got Joe Maurer. He's from Minnesota. He's looking at Minnesota, Mizzou, Wisconsin, Colorado, Michigan State. So like some smaller schools. So that'll definitely be interesting. Then last up, we have Alex Smith. He's from California as well. He went to the University of Utah under Urban Meyer. He's looking at USC, Penn State, Florida, Texas, UCLA. So definitely, I think quarterback is the most interesting, but we have a lot of other good players. So running back, we got Cadillac Williams. He's from Alabama. He played at Auburn. Remember me, played for the Buccaneers, was really good early in his career. Uh, he's looking at Florida, Ohio State, Nebraska, Oklahoma, UCLA. We got Cedric Benson. Now, Cedric Benson, a legend like texas running back really high recruit really good in college like pretty good in the nfl as well uh he's from midland texas played at university of texas but he's looking at florida nebraska ohio state michigan georgia then we got ronnie brown who also played at auburn with cadillac williams uh, he's from the state of georgia though he's looking at the u georgia memphis ucf nebraska then the last one is frank gore another one of those crazy running backs who went to miami they had him mcgahee and clinton port us all at the same time right now he's leaning florida miami oklahoma georgia and the ohio state so that is our running back crew then we go on to wide receivers now really pretty good group of wide receivers as well we got um we got roddy white he played a long time in the nfl for the falcons he's from south carolina he's looking at florida penn state georgia ohio state we got braylon edwards now he played at michigan he's from detroit really high pick by the browns played for the jets he's looking at michigan ohio state notre dame Miss uh, michigan state and wisconsin we got michael clayton had a long career played at uh lsu 
Big time weapon, 6'3", 215. He's looking at LSU, A&M, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Florida. And then our last one is Vin Vincent Jackson from Colorado. He actually played at Northern Colorado, so small school, really good in the NFL with the Chargers, you know, deep threat, but he had size. He's looking at Miami of Ohio, Florida. I, I, I got to kind of check who's the head coach at Miami of Ohio because all of a sudden that coming out of nowhere and they're recruiting like crazy. Okay, then we go down to tight ends. We got Heath Miller from Virginia, played at the University of Virginia. Virginia and really good with the Steelers. He's looking at Florida, Nebraska, Georgia, OU. Then offensive lineman, we just got two. First, Andrew Whitworth, who played at LSU, just retired a few years ago, played with the Rams, Bengals in the NFL, big time left tackle. He's looking at Florida, UCLA, Nebraska, Ohio State, Cal. Go to guard, we got one. We got Logan Mankins. He's from, um, he played at Fresno State from uh, California. Played with the Patriots, like borderline Hall of Famer guard. He's looking at Miami, Texas, Florida, Hawaii, Georgia. Okay, now moving on to defense. We only have one defensive end. It's DeMarcus Ware. Now, he's from Auburn, Alabama, but he played at Troy. Smaller school, obviously, Hall of Fame pass rusher with the Cowboys and Broncos. He's looking at Miami, Florida, Georgia, Memphis, Miami of Ohio. I, what is in the water there? Then we got two uh, offense, uh, defensive tackles. First, Marcus Spear. He played at LSU. He's from, this, from the state, but they're not on his list. He's looking at Georgia, Florida, Nebraska, Ohio State. Then we got Sean Cody, really good pass rusher interior defensive lineman for USC. Uh, he's from Cali. He's looking at Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, Florida, Minnesota. Okay, moving to outside linebacker. We got one. We got Thomas Davis played forever for the Panthers. He's from the University of Georgia. He's from the state of Georgia. He's looking at Georgia, Florida, Nebraska, Penn State, Ohio State. Moving to middle linebackers, we got two. Lofa Tatupu played for USC from Anchorage, Alaska, I guess. That's what this came up with. But uh, played at USC, played for the Seahawks. Really good middle linebacker for them. Then we got Derek Johnson. He played at Texas. He's from the state of Texas. He's looking at AM, LSU, Arkansas. I don't know if I looked at Lofa. He's looking at UCLA, OU, Air Force, Arkansas. Okay, then moving on to corners, we just have one. Adam Pacman Jones, you know, really... <laughs> Really crazy career in the NFL. He played at West Virginia. I believe he was like a top 15 pick in the NFL draft, but you know, good NFL player, kind of had some run-ins with the law, but he's looking at Florida, Georgia, Bama, Ohio State. Then we have one safety. It is Antrell Roll, free safety. Was on those 01 Miami teams with Sean Taylor, Ed Reed. Uh, he's looking at Florida, Miami, Georgia, Oklahoma. So that is our list. All right, so now we are just going to sim to the start of the season. Then we'll do kind of, we'll look at the top 25 to see what our teams are looking like, who's going to be the really teams to beat this year. Okay, looking at our preseason polls. So Florida, number one team in the country, really good on offense. Honestly, just decent on defense. Uh, UCLA B plus, but I mean, you cannot count out UCLA these days. They've made five of the last six national championships, including winning two of the last three. So they're on a roll. I really like this Miami team this year. I think they could do some damage. Nebraska looks good. Georgia looks pretty good. Cal looks pretty good. Oklahoma looks pretty good. Penn State looks pretty good. Bunch of B pluses. Ohio State A plus. They actually look really good across the board. Uh, Army. A minus, okay. Miami of Ohio. Like, who's their coach? I might have to check that. Texas looks decent. Notre Dame an A, so I don't think they have a quarterback, though. Okay, let's look at the Heisman watch here. So, Tim Couch, first in the Heisman. Who I can't even remember who won it last year. Oh, he won it last year. So, he's trying to win back-to-back -back Heisman trophies. If he goes back-to-back -back Heisman's wins that national championship this year, Couch is going to have quite a career. Martindale at Nebraska. We got Michael Vick in his senior year at Vandy. Uh, Tui at Fresno State and Culpepper at the U. I, all really good options. Um, Couch... First team, Andre Johnson won the Bolitnikoff as a true freshman. Santana Moss, number one receiver for Florida this year. Hutchinson, Leonard Davis, Andre Carter for Arkansas. Uh, Namdi Osmoa, only a sophomore for AM, makes it. Go to second team, Vic for Vandy. Keep going down. Casey Hampton for Ohio State. And that is our second team All Americans. Look at our championship contenders for right now. 
So Oklahoma looks like they're right in the mix here. Florida, obviously, Ohio State. I don't know why they're ranked so low right now, but those three look like kind of just the best three programs in the country right now. And they've won all national championships. Texas looks like they're going to be good next year and the year after. Georgia right on the like right on that top five fringe. Notre Dame's fallen a bit. Nebraska looks like a top five, top 10 team pretty consistently. Cal and UCLA as well. Penn State kind of top 10. Miami really good this year, and it looks like they really are taking a dive. So Miami, this looks like it's their one shot to win one over the next few years. Cal is an A-plus program right now. Getting Brady really just changed everything for them. Okay, we're going to look at some of these rosters quickly. So first, Bama, they got Richard Seymour. They got Carson Palmer. They got Dabo Sweeney at head coach. It'll be really interesting to see. He's got Carson Palmer. Can he put together a team that's good enough to like save his job and try to make Bama relevant again. Arkansas, this is LT's last year. They also got Andre Carter. They got Kevin Williams. So they've done a good job of getting some pretty high recruits. Cal, they got Joey Harrington. So they went from Brady to Harrington. You know, Harrington's been good for them at Cal as well the last, you know, last season. So Cal, pretty good team, kind of back to front there. Colorado, this is where Pete Carroll is. Not much going. Florida, obviously, like, look at their QB room. Tim Couch is a senior. Byron Leftwich, Phillip Rivers, and then this sophomore, Charles Palmer. Like, their QB room is insane. Their running back room is almost as insane. Clinton Portis, accidentally Dante Stallworth, and then Willis McGahee. Uh, wide receivers, they got Santana Moss. Chad Johnson left a year early. Otherwise, they'd have Santana and Chad for one more year. But they have a nice group below them. They just got Jericho Cautry in the door. Look at their safety room. So strong safety, whatever. Look at their two free safeties. Ed Reed with Sean Taylor, guys. They got freaking Bryant McFadden at corner. They just got Carlos Dansby and DJ Williams. So Florida, I didn't mean to exit out there, but Florida is just looking like they're, they're, they just haven't really ever taken a step back. They've just been very consistent with recruiting. Georgia, kind of similar, not quite as good, I would say, but like they've done the job really on defense right now too. They don't really have this quarterback. He's a freshman. He'll be probably their starter next year. You look at their defensive roster though, they have some good good young players like Asante Samuel, D-line, they have Chris Jenkins and Julius Peppers. So those three alone, you can build a pretty scary defense with those three. And then obviously all the other guys they have. Uh, keep going down. LSU looks not bad who's their qb 84 qb he's a sophomore so he could grow into the job but yeah not super scary for them uh the u dante culpepper hutchinson like this is their year if they're gonna get it done they have a 99 senior quarterback they have no quarterbacks in behind them like that'll be back next year they have a 91 senior 93 senior 92 senior 92 senior 590 plus wide receivers uh, yeah if they're gonna get it done this is their year because they lose a ton of talent next year so this is kind of their year we got to kind of keep our eyes on miami of ohio they're doing really good at jet getting in the mix for a bunch of these guys they got andre johnson at wide receiver they have a good senior quarterback this year they got an 81 true freshman so this alford is going to be a good qb for them going forward so i don't really know what's going on with miami ohio but we got to keep our eyes on them notre dame Dame. They got two nasty senior wide receivers. Honestly, quite a bit of talent. But if you look at their QB position, 81 junior. They don't even have like a good, really good freshman in the way. They fallen off a little bit. Ohio State, this team is loaded right now. Stroud, Hampton on the D-line. McAllister at running back. Light at left tackle. Josh McCown at QB. Another D tackle and Henderson. Like you just go up and down their roster. Larry Johnson at running back. Lance Briggs. Lee Evans. D'Angelo Hall. Mark. Br oh, no. I was going to say Mark. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Not Mark Burnett. I don't know why I was going to say that. Um, yeah, so they probably want to. I mean, this guy's a freaking freshman going to be this year. Like he's going to be a mid 90s quarterback. For sure, by the time uh, by the time McCown leaves, and then this guy's only a sophomore too. So really like what Ohio State is building right now. They them in Florida, they have just not 
slowed down. Uh, oh, you really like them as well. They've just they haven't got quite the star power as some of those other teams, but they do a really good job of just keeping everything going. You know, a good junior QB, this this freshman QB, by the time the junior leaves, he'll be a 90 overall. Uh, they have, you know, senior running backs and they just got Michael Turner to be, you know, in at running back. They got Brandon Lloyd, a sophomore at receiver. They have Jeremy Shockey. They have a ton of players in defense. So they're just really consistent. Maybe not getting those elite elite guys like Florida in you know ohio state all the time but doing really well penn state has got some stars like freeney and clements but not really anything i'm super scared of if i was the rest of the, the football world um tennessee nothing crazy they do have a decent quarterback but not not the best roster overall the the projections really like texas going but they don't have a quarterback this freshman could be okay in a few years, but a bunch of senior running backs don't really have a stud there. Don't have like a young stud with wide receiver. Like this sophomore is actually pretty good, but I don't know. I don't know. The projection likes them going forward. I, I don't know if I totally buy it. AM honestly has been down, but they just got Eli Manning. They're going to have this guy start for year. Then they're going to have Eli starting for three seasons. They got Steven Jackson as well. They have, oh gosh, they're going to have no receivers for Eli next year. So they better hope they get some big time receivers in the door. But Texas AM could be could be decent. Uh, UCLA. I mean, they have David Carr, only a junior. They got Troy Polamalu. Uh, you know, I feel like they got a few other big time recruits, didn't they? Maybe they missed out on some of the guys from that last class. But I mean, they're still going to be really good this year. They're going to have a shot to make it. I, I'm not going to count these guys out until they go on a run of not making it. Five out of six. Yeah, who knows? USC. They're kind of trash right now. And this is right when like Pete Carroll got hired. USC was just starting to climb back up in real life. Does not look like it is going to happen for them. We have UW who's been consistently pretty good through the sim, but nothing too crazy. So that is it, guys. Those are our rosters. And I think I like Florida, Ohio State, OU, UCLA, probably just because they've been really consistently in the mix. So we're going to sim to week nine and then we'll see where we're at. All right. So here we are in week nine. We're going to take a quick look at our recruiting here. See where some of these dudes are at. So A-Rod might go to Florida, Minnesota, the UVA Tech. If he goes to Florida, their QB situation is going to be very hard to work out. I kind of hope he doesn't go to Florida. Mauer, I, whatever happens, I hope Aaron Rodgers and Joe Mauer both don't end up at Minnesota. That's my number one thing. That would be unfortunate. Fitzpatrick, Nevada or SC. If I was SC, I would be doing everything in my power. Oh, they might get Alex. Why are all these guys maybe going to Minnesota? I don't know. We'll have to see with these QBs. Very weird. Okay. Cadillac locked in at Ohio State. Oh, and they get Cedric Benson. So they get two number one running backs. Ronnie Brown looking like the UUCF or Memphis. Then Frank Gore going to Oklahoma. Didn't they just get Michael Turner last year? Wow. That's a pretty good one-two punch. Roddy White looking like Florida, Penn State, Vandy. Braylon, Michigan State, Notre Dame, Michigan. Michael Clayton, AM, Ole Miss, LSU. The AM needs Michael Clayton desperately. Their best receiver who's back next year right now is a 69 overall, and they're going to have Eli Manning. So I actually kind of hope he goes there. Uh, Fresno State, North Texas for Vincent Jackson. He wants to go to small school again. Heath Miller, Oklahoma, Nebraska, or Florida. Andrew Whitworth, Nebraska, Ohio State, maybe Cal. Logan Mankins, uh, Hawaii, Texas, Miami. DNs, Demarcus Ware, either Florida, Memphis. Okay, Miami Troy's on the list, his real life school. Spears, Nebraska, Georgia, maybe Ohio State. Sean Cody, uh, Georgia, Minnesota. Like, I don't know what, who's it? Who's it, Minnesota? Uh, Thomas Davis, Georgia, Nebraska, Florida, Lofa Tatupu going to Oklahoma. That's a big pickup. Derek Johnson, maybe North Texas, AM. Adam Jones locked in at Bama. That's a big get for Bama. Um, and then last but not, not, but not least, we got Antrell Roll going to Georgia, going to the Dogs. Okay, looking at our top 25 here. Let's see how the teams are doing. So Florida staying undefeated. They got Georgia this week. Just barely beat Mizzou last week. Look at the points they're scoring, though. Uh, Georgia. So Georgia's like their last really tough game. 
Uh, there's Ohio State's rest of their schedule. Nebraska. They got Penn State and then a bunch of unranked. Baylor. Who Didn't they make it two years? Yeah, last year they played uh, UCLA. They have a lot of games left, though. Texas. Uh, Baylor. Is their really tough one? Miami. So we have a lot of uh, unbeatens right now. Then we still got Penn State, UCLA. I mean, you never know. They could get back in. Georgia, Army, North Texas, BYU, Wisconsin, AM, Tennessee, Arizona. So none of those games, there wasn't one like, oh, we need to watch that. Uh, Tim Couch right now trying to go back to back Heismans and and his stats. If he wins a high, wins a natty in a Heisman this year. He's got to be early on the player of the decade for the 2000s, for sure. Two Heismans and a national championship. Look at just some of the season stats. So Couch by far leading the country in passing. Vixen fifth. Uh, rushing, that's the list. Receiving Santana Moss in fourth. Uh, tackle leaders and sack leaders. Oh, and there's interception leaders. Kind of want to just see where Florida's at right now. Points per game because it looks 51.2. Florida has an insane offense. Here's where we're defense. Ohio State, Army, Baylor, Texas, Nebraska. So I think I'm just going to sim to uh, conference championship weekend. But yeah, I mean, I, it looks like Ohio State and Florida could be on a collision course. Very good teams. Didn't have super difficult schedules left, but we'll see. Okay, here we are. End of the season. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole recruiting. I'm just like interested with these QBs because uh, so we'll just see if any of the QBs figured out where they're going to go. The rest of the players will just look for National Signing Day. Uh, Rogers, UCLA, Minnesota. They just don't throw the ball at UCLA. They run triple option. But I mean, that'd be a huge pickup. Fitzpatrick going to Nevada. Uh, Mao or Minnesota or Michigan. It'd be cool to see him in Minnesota. Oh, but Alex Smith is going to Minnesota. Okay, go to Michigan State, Joe Maurer. Do not go to the same school, you two. I don't know why the QBs always do that. Go to the same school. Okay, let's go look at the top 25 here. Texas, 12 and overs, Army. And Texas has no conference championship game, so they're in automatically. Cal, Florida. Cal plays UCLA, who has one loss. UCLA could get in again. Nebraska. Versus Ohio State. Okay, these are some huge games. Ohio, there's so many one-loss teams. We low-key need... I, I kind of want Army to lose uh, to Southern Miss because that'll open the door for someone else. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sim this Army-Southern Miss game. Now, if Army wins, it's basically locked in who's in this game. And Army wins 31-24. So they're basically locked in to play Texas. So that is not going to be the best matchup. But the rest of these matchups are actually sick. Nebraska, Ohio State, Cal and UCLA. Uh, Miami, Syracuse isn't a bad game. A&M in Florida is a sick game. Like these are better games than the Natty for sure. For sure. So maybe we'll watch two of these. Maybe we'll watch Nebraska, Ohio State and UCLA, Cal. And... Uh, just because I, I don't really care about Army Texas, honestly, if I'm being honest. This would be the first year I don't watch the Natty, but I mean, Texas Army, that better just be a blowout for Texas. So here's how we're sitting. Ohio State, 42 points per game. They're third on defense um, in the country. P Nebraska, very good as well. Josh McCowan, Henderson, um, Dion Branch. Uh, yeah, Lance Briggs is out and Dion Branch. So two pretty good players for each team. But uh, yeah, this is a great matchup. You know, winning the Big Ten, you know, that's not a, you know, that's not nothing. Like, you want to keep racking those up if you're Woody Hayes or Tom Osborne. So, okay, we're going to sim through the first quarter. Ohio State jumps up 7-0. Uh, Nebraska goes down and scores themselves. So it is 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's go to the end here. And Nebraska takes a 14-7 lead right before the half. We've got a big third and six. Or sorry, right at the end of the quarter. Got a big third and six here for Ohio State. They got trips to the bottom of the screen. Josh McCown in at quarterback here. Drops back. Fires a deep out route. Two feet in bounds, I think. There we go. Josh McCown. Drop it in a bucket. Okay, keep going here. Oh, they said he was out of bounds there. Okay, I got it. I thought he got his feet in. We got a third and four here for Nebraska, though. See what they got. Martindale drops back. Nice little seam ball right over the middle. He has some zip on that football. Going third and six. First and goal from the nine, and they score. So 21-7 lead here 
Four Nebraska. McCown, third and two, gets it first and ten. He's got some... Oh, they fumble, and Nebraska gets the ball. Nebraska has a chance to go put a stranglehold in this game. They don't do it, though. Fourth and six for Ohio State. Ball drop, first and ten. Eleven. Second and five, first and ten. They score. Wow, Nebraska, 28-7. Ohio State would definitely love to put a touchdown on the board here. Second and 10, first and 10, second and one, third and one, three. Oh, they're going to kick a field goal. Okay, so it'll be 28 to 10. We'll go through the second half pretty quick unless Ohio State can, you know, put together a really good third quarter. Okay, let's see here. We'll just go through the quarter here. 31-10, but, oh, 31-13. Nebraska just can't be stopped though, but then Ohio State goes down. I mean, it's 18 points. They do get a stop. Oh, but then, okay, yeah, that's going to do it. We'll watch from right here. Just watch a little bit of Nebraska offense, but that is basically going to do it. Nebraska is going to knock them off. Maybe, what, man, uh, maybe they'll put, oh, wow, it's a big tackle there. Maybe they'll put like Nebraska or somebody in over Army. I just doubt it. Uh, with no losses, they tend to go with those teams, even though they're, you know, yeah, yeah. So there's a Steve Smith touchdown. We're going to go till the end of the game here. 45-27. Oh, 45-35. But yeah, that's it. There we go. 51-35. Nebraska. This is the number three defense in the country. And Nebraska played incredible. McCown had a good day. 521, but not enough. Let's look at some stats here. So McCown, four, 492. He must have had some rushing yards as well. Yeah, had 30 yards on the ground and a touchdown. McAllister was just okay. Barry was their big-time receiver. He's only an 83 overall. Fre Lee Evans, freshman this year, 101. He's going to be their best receiver here going forward. They're still going to have Josh McCown back next year, so they're going to be a good start. Martindale had six touchdown passes as a senior. Steve Smith went off with 147 and, a and three touchdowns. Their running back played good as well, so... Nebraska's offense was just incredible. Okay, I was get, we're just going to advance. We'll see. Maybe one of those other teams are getting in. If not, we'll watch Texas Army. Okay, Whitaker, the QB from Mizzou, beats out Tim Couch for the Heisman. Oh, Couch, yeah. He had a chance to win back-to-back -back Heismans and a Natty. Don't think he's going to do that this year. He's not going to win the Natty, I don't think, either. So, uh, we will see, though, what is the matchup. Yeah, it's Army, Army, Texas kind of unfortunate would have liked to see cal or nebraska in it so that means florida lost to texas a&m yeah i would have really liked nebraska or cal but uh there it is so we got army texas i mean maybe we'll get to see maybe texas will win this and have a bit of a resurgence in texas because they have not been good this sim this obviously would be their first natty and maybe we'll see yeah maybe they'll start doing better in recruiting and you know starting to make a make a play in the second half of this uh of this sim okay so this is where we're sitting texas number one defense in the country seventh on O, army eight and six so both really like top 10 teams on both sides of the ball they have quentin jammer uh, that's their top three injury report. So yeah, let's get into it. Gonna go through this one pretty quick. There's not a lot of guys we know or we're not super invested in this game, but uh, I, I, I'm kind of cheering for Texas because I'd like to see Texas kind of shoot up here in the second half, maybe knock off Texas A&M or have two really good teams in Texas. So we're gonna just sim. And then if we, you know, if it's getting good in the fourth quarter, then we can hop in. So Army goes up 14-0 and oh my goodness, 21-0 Army. Texas scores 21-7, 28-7 at half. Or no, in the fourth quarter, Texas just scored. Army third and six, they get stopped. Okay, so Texas needs a 14-point comeback here in the fourth quarter. Third and 11, fourth and two, they punt it and army third and six first and seven second and one for, yeah that's gonna do it they, okay somehow oh they fumbled but texas needs two scores in a minute here nine yards third and one we'll watch as one play third and one they're down 14 with 56 seconds they need an onside kick and a touchdown in 56 seconds with no timeout so yeah this one's over but we'll see do a little slant over the middle i probably yeah now they're gonna run hurry up army i cannot believe army is gonna win a national championship yeah we're just gonna sim through the rest of this here cal beats nebraska wow that was a sick game there it is army 
wins a national championship. Derek Sherman at QB, four touchdowns, ran for 145. Just kind of had a lot of receivers do pretty well. Gray was the big receiver there. Run game wasn't great for Texas. And their QB is a 78 overall. And they made the national championship. Neither of these teams. UCLA, Nebraska was a much better national championship game than this. But uh, there it is. Or sorry, it's Cal, Nebraska. There it is. Okay. Army, you get it done. Okay. So end of the season here. Get the final top 25. Army, Cal, Texas, AM, Nebraska, Ohio State, Baylor, Miami. Did Florida lose? Okay, Florida lost their last two games. Conference Heisman. We already actually seen Victor Whitaker, Mizzou QB, wins the Heisman this year. Couch second, Harrington McCown. All Americans, Tim Couch, uh, Santana Moss, Florida. So that's the end of his career. Had four 1,000 yard seasons, a 13 and a 15. That's a really good career for Santana. Really good um light hutchinson on the o line uh witherspoon and buchanan both for the u big time defenders first team uh second team joey harrington kind of it then freshman berlin had you know a really nice year honestly for a freshman lee evans at ohio state almost 900 yards kellen winslow jr at georgia like 400 yards darnell dockett for va tech D'Angelo Hall at Ohio State, two picks. Reggie Williams as a returner for Cal. It's a big returner, like a 6'4", 200-whatever-pound returner. It's a big boy. Okay. Couch led the country in passing. Antoine Randall L. gets third at Syracuse. Wow. Joey Harrington as well. Rushing. Uh, receiving Santana Moss second. Oh, my God. The Army receiver had 1,900 yards. Tackles and sacks. And there's INTs. Look at team stats. So Florida, number one offense in yards and points. Um, defensively, Texas looks like them. Virginia Tech, Baylor kind of had the number one defenses. So that's kind of what Texas rode to the natty, but it wasn't enough against Army. I mean, they had a 78 overall QB. Not really sure what uh, what we were to expect there. I mean, I still thought they'd beat Army, but I mean, it made sense. Army's QB was like a 91 overall, so... Okay, look at QB. So Harrington going to be back. He had 3,900 yards, 48 touchdowns this year. That's going to wrap it up for um, Tim Couch. He had a really good career. Never won a natty, though. Or no, he did. Yeah, no, he, 99. Did he start 99? Okay, he did win a natty as well, actually. So he won in 1999 and a Heisman. Yeah, I mean, he he had a great career, honestly. His stats were really good. Tui, um... He had a really good career for Fresno State. Cole Pepper, he's done. He got, I don't know if he got injured or just got injured and didn't really play. So he won the Heisman. His second, his last two years after his Heisman, though, were not great. Drew Brees barely saw any of him at North Texas. Looks like he got injured this year. Michael Vick, going to be done for him. Looks like he might have got injured and just maybe run a little bit different of an offense this year. Had a good career, but... Uh, Antoine Randall L was incredible this year and ran for 849. So Josh McCown's going to be back. David Carr is going to be back for UCLA. Oh my gosh. He's running the ball really well for, for UCLA as well. Running backs, Brian Westbrook at Navy. He's going to be back. Most likely deuce is going to be gone. Never ran for a thousand yards. LT, you know, good career. Um, probably didn't use him quite as much as they should have. Clinton Portis going to be back for Florida. Same with Stallworth, who really hasn't been getting much run yet. But uh, there it is. So those are kind of our main running backs right now. Tight end Jeremy Shockey going to be back for one more year. Don't use him a ton, but he's the best tight end we are right now. Santana Moss already looks at. Steve Smith, he went to Nebraska. They don't really throw. 768 is not bad in that offense. So Corn Robinson, 730 this year. Reggie Wayne, 850. Dion Branch also at Nebraska, 100 yards. Javon Walker, 493. Yeah. Oh, Jabbar Gaffney at Florida State. Oh my gosh. He's at back to back nasty years for Florida State. Go to defensive ends. Andre Carter, uh, 26 and a half sacks is pretty good. Uh, Seymour, 20 and a half. Julius Peppers has 12 and a half so far. Uh, Terrell Suggs, only a sophomore at Ohio State. He's just going to get better. 
Uh, right ends don't really have any D tackles. Chris Jenkins, there's his stats for his career, along with Casey Hamptons. That's a crazy interior. And they have John Henderson. So, yeah, they're all gone, though, except Henderson. Henderson will be back for them. Dan Morgan at Maryland, his stats. Right outside, Will Witherspoon at the U. He got All-American and won the Butkus Nagurski. He had four and a half sacks, four picks, a defensive touchdown, 40 tackles. Yeah, he had a big year. Lance Briggs ended up getting hurt, but he could be really good for Ohio State going forward. Nate Clement's going to wrap it up at Penn State, seven picks. Quentin Jammer, uh, one more season at Texas. Philip Buchanan has one more season still. He won the Thorpe Award this year at the U. Free safety, Ed Reed, uh, still going to be back for one more year unless he leaves early. Strong safety, Adrian Wilson. That's what he's looking like. Troy Polamalu. That's what he's done so far. So yeah, that is kind of our players. Now we're gonna sim through the rest of the regular season, or we're gonna sim to the off season. We're gonna look at national signing day. Then we're gonna go look at our coaches, see if anybody left, anybody staying, you know, all that good stuff. Okay, national signing day. We already looked at the QBs, but we'll look one more time at them. So A-Rod ends up at UCLA. I mean, it's a huge pickup for them not doesn't totally fit their offense but he can run i mean he definitely can run fitzpatrick nevada and then the other two both at minnesota right mauer and alex both at minnesota running back cadillac and benson and then ronnie brown ends up at the u and frank Gore ends up at oklahoma wide receiver roddy white goes to penn state braylon edwards goes to ohio state nebraska that guy's not one of ours a m michael clayton so that's a huge pickup gonna play with eli manning Keith Miller going to go to Nebraska. That's a good pickup for them. Andrew Whitworth going to Nebraska as well. Guard Logan Mankins going to Texas. Demarcus Ware going to Florida. Marcus Spears, Ohio State. Sean Cody, Minnesota. Thomas Davis, Florida. So Florida's getting some defenders. Totupu, Oklahoma. Derek Jar Johnson, Arkansas. Adam Jones, Bama. And then last but not least, Antrell Roll goes to Georgia. Play free safety for them. Nebraska, Florida, both them. Ohio State all kind of stood out. Washington, get a bunch of four stars. Uh, Penn State, Bama, Cal, Nebraska, Ohio State, five, five stars. UCLA, Army, Florida. That's where we're sitting. Sim to the start of the O2 season, and then we're going to look at now, uh, the coaches and just see where they go, and then I'm going to make the next recruiting class. Okay, so Barry Alvarez staying at Boise State. Bowden's at Michigan as DC. Oh, Mac Brown at UCF. Colorado on the hot seat for Pete Carroll. Jim Harbaugh safe for now at Georgia. Woody Hayes all obviously staying at Ohio State. Lou Holt safe at Tulane. Don James at Nevada. Jimmy Johnson safe at uh, Miami. Chip Kelly safe after one year back at Oregon. Urban Meyer safe at Florida. Robert Nealon safe at Tennessee. Uh, Ed Orgeron going to be the head coach at Duke now. Tom Osborne safe at Nebraska. Joe Paw on the hot seat at Stanford. Gary Patterson low at Hawaii. Nick Saban got fired wherever he's at. He's at Baylor now as DC. Bo Schembechler safe for now at Penn State. Howard Schnellenberger safe at Georgia Tech. Kirby Smart safe at Georgia. Spurrier at Ole Miss. Uh, Dabo hot seat. So he's got one more chance at Bama or he's gone. Barry Switzer safe for now at Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Do not fire Barry Switzer. Oh my goodness. He's won three national championships for you. Kyle Whittingham safe at USF. Uh, and that is it. That is our guys. So that's where we're sitting, guys. I'm going to make the next rec recruiting class. And we'll get into it. All right, guys. The O two recruiting classes done this was the last class where i kind of had to come up with the class myself and kind of bandy it together but once we start getting into o3 and on it's actually going to be really set classes so it won't be as much moving guys around but this is another really good class there's a few big time players it'll be very interesting to see you know see where they go so class is made and uh yeah let's get into it not the most balanced i'd say definitely a little more offensive heavy but 
you know, good players throughout. Okay, first at QB, we have Jay Cutler, Chicago Bears, Broncos, played at Vandy. Um, He's looking like he might go to Minnesota, maybe Iowa, Wisconsin, Mizzou. And we just had two quarterbacks, Mauer and I think Alex Smith go to Mi Minnesota last year. So I hope he doesn't go there. Just I want to see these QBs get spread around. Then we have Matt Liner, Heisman Trophy winner at USC. UCLA just got Aaron Rodgers last year. So I hope he would. I hope he goes to USC or you know LSU, A and M, Cal, something like that. And then we have Vince Young. This one is going to be massive. Whoever, oh my God, I accidentally made him six seven. Oh no. <laughs> He's supposed to be 6'4". I don't know if I can change that. Okay, so we got a giant version of Vince Young. He's supposed to be 6'4". Um, but where, no matter what, wherever he goes, he's going to be absolutely insane. Uh, he's from Houston, obviously went to Texas in real life, but Texas is not even on his list, which I thought after making the national championship game last year, I thought they would have had a chance this year to, you know, have a pretty decent recruiting class, but not, uh, not in on BY. And the last one is going to be Marcus Vick, Michael Vick's little brother. Um, he's looking at Miami, BYU, Nebraska, Wisconsin. So four, you know, big time QBs, we'll see where they end up. Then we got D'Angelo Williams, you know, really good running back for the Panthers in the NFL. Uh, he's from Arkansas. He's looking at Arkansas, OU, LSU, Texas. We got Lorenzo Booker. He's from Cali. Big time recruit coming out of high school. It was decent in the NFL. Uh, looking at UCLA, Cal, USC, Fresno State. Moving down to wide receiver. I like this. This is a very good wide receiver core. There's only four, but they're all really good. So first we have Santonio Holmes. He's actually from Florida, but he played at Ohio State. He's looking at Georgia, Florida, Ohio State, Nebraska, UCLA. We have Larry Fitzgerald. Gerald, who looks like he might go to Minnesota. He is from Minnesota. Minnesota could get some huge recruits. They got those two QBs last year. You get Fitzgerald. That could be nasty. But Devin Hester obviously played at Miami at the U, but he's looking at Florida, Ohio State, Bama, Syracuse. And then we should have one more. We have one more. Brandon Marshall, you know, really good. Broncos, uh, Bears, Miami in the NFL. Uh, six, five, just absolute freak show. He played at central Florida. He's looking at Florida, Ohio state, Nebraska, Georgia, A&M. So those four receivers, I think are really interesting kid. Okay. Then we got Mercedes Lewis. He's from long beach, California. He played at UCLA played so long in the NFL. He's looking at Florida, UCLA, Ohio state, Texas, OU move on to offensive line. We got one offensive tackle. We got Eric, Eric Winston, Winston played at Miami, but he's from Texas. He's looking at a and M, TCU, Baylor, LSU. We move over to guards. We got two. We got Davin Joseph, a really good guard in college and the NFL. I think he was at Oklahoma. He's looking at Nebraska, UCLA, Oklahoma, Penn State, Tennessee. We got Justin Blaylock who played at Texas. He's from Texas. He's looking at Florida, UCLA, Michigan, Penn State, USC. Then we do have one center as well. We got Nick Mangold, played forever for the Jets. Really good center in the NFL. He's looking at UCLA, Nebraska, Tennessee, um, Texas, Oklahoma. Okay, moving on to defense now. We got two defensive ends. We got Cameron Wimbley, high pick in the NFL, played for the Browns. He's looking at Nebraska, Oklahoma, Colorado, Mizzou, Texas. We got Sean Merriman. He played at Maryland. Uh, he's from the state of Maryland. He's looking at Ohio State, Florida, Nebraska, UCLA, Michigan. Move on to defensive tackles. We got a couple nice ones. First, Haloti Nada. One of the freakiest defensive linemen of all time. He played at Oregon. He's from the state of Utah, though. He's looking at Baylor, BYU, Nevada, Utah, Minnesota, Boise State. Then we got Kyle Williams. Uh, played for the Bills. He's looking. He's from Louisiana. He's looking at LSU, A&M, Texas, Oklahoma. One more defensive end as well. Ahmad Brooks, who played for the Niners, kind of outside low linebacker defensive end type. He's from Virginia. He's looking at Florida, Georgia, LSU, Alabama, Ohio State. And we have no linebackers we only have two oh we only have one db so it is gonna be brandon merriweather he's from florida and he's looking at nebraska ohio state usc lsu and penn state so that is our recruiting class guys pretty good one definitely be you know some hall of famers some unreal college players in the mix there so be very interesting to see where all these guys end up okay so we're gonna sim to the start of the o2 season so look at the preseason polls here to start. So Nebraska coming in with an A plus, really good on offense. Honestly, not great on defense, only a B plus. Cal, kind of similar, really good on offense, not great on defense. We got Ohio State, 
really good at oh my goodness a plus everywhere including special teams so they might be the best team in the country right now miami looks pretty good army who made the natty last year looks pretty good texas looks pretty good um they have really good defense florida looks like they're right there with ohio state not quite as good of a defense as ohio state but right there a m looks decent georgia looks really really good and balanced mizzou looks pretty good ucla looks pretty good syracuse looks not bad who else anybody else oakland Oklahoma A plus. We'll definitely have to look at them. Vandy, Vandy lost Vic though. He's gone. Uh, Notre Dame's decent, but they're definitely not quite what they used to be. Now go, let's go look at some of these rosters. Like I said, it's actually been a few days since I've recorded one of these, so it'll be interesting to kind of look at. So yes, Alabama. They have Mark or uh, Carson Palmer, only a junior. Uh, they have Dabo Sweeney, who's in basically he's in a make or break year. Bama has to have a good year or he's going to get fired. They have Marcus Trufant as well. Keep going down. We got Cal with Joey Harrington. Um, what are his weapons like on offense? A couple of good receivers. One of them is only a sophomore, too. Uh, wide receiver. So, oh, they got Reggie Williams, sophomore receiver. Yeah, they have three young guys. I mean, they don't have a lot of depth, but uh, three young receivers. They have a really good tight end and a sophomore who could be pretty good by next year. Did they get? They don't have really anybody. Oh, this guy will take over in a year. And if they get Matt Leinert or something at Cal, they could be. You know, Cal's really kind of putting it together right now. Uh, Clemson hasn't really been up to much. We'll go Florida, though. I mean, Ed Reed, Clinton Portis, Dante Stallworth, Willis McGahee, Sean Taylor, Phillip Rivers starting at QB. Phillip Rivers has a chance to be a four-year starter. He's starting as a, tr a redshirt freshman, but if he stays all four years, he'll be the starter for four years in a row. I guess maybe this Palmer will actually start this year. Who knows? But I, I think it'll be... Look at their threesome at running back. That is insane. Yes, I, I didn't mean to put Stallworth there, but it is what it is. Wideouts. Um, they got Jericho Cotter. Michigan hasn't been doing anything. Minnesota. Minnesota. This is an interesting team. So I actually have like pretty good group of guys. They just got Joe Mauer and Alex Smith. Uh, I mean, they, yeah, they're set at QB. They have a sick running back, a junior. They got to get some more. They looked really good at receiver. They're all seniors. Oh, oh no. They're basically going to have no receivers next year. So they really got it. If they got Larry Fitzgerald, I kind of hope Larry Fitzgerald goes there. Goes plays with Joe Mauer and Alex Smith. That'd be kind of funny. Kind of wild. Uh, we look at Nebraska. Nebraska has been really consistent throughout the sim as well. They got a senior quarterback. Ooh, okay. They got this freshman, actually. Big time recruit. A true freshman right now. Already an 80. He'll be a, probably 85 by next year. Yeah, nothing crazy at running back. Receiver, they still have Deion Branch. Um, they've had a really crazy run receivers. They had Randy Moss, and they got Steve Smith, and then Deion Branch. But they haven't got that kind of next superstar. This Justin Leonard looks pretty good, but overall they just got Heath miller who really fits their running scheme so overall team looks really good nebraska's just been consistently in the mix and i think they're going to be consistently in the mix for a while notre dame definitely hitting the fall off right here not much at qb running back they're just decent wide receiver they're just okay like they they were so good to start the sim they got bob sanders on the back end they're like that's might be their only one of our guys to really go there and they used to absolutely destroy it recruiting a team who has not fallen off at all the ohio state they got josh mccown as a senior they don't okay this troy smith actually only a sophomore and yeah they have a junior so one of these two guys will start next year they haven't got one of like our real life guys but they have some good qbs they just got cadillac williams and cedric benson they have lee evans who's only a sophomore they just got braylon edwards yeah like these guys are not slowing down what are they like on defense right now strong safety good but oh okay safeties uh, they got d'angelo hall only a sophomore they got another good sophomore not a lot of depth there but they got lance briggs at linebacker yeah this team is right there with florida they have a nasty interior look at all their defensive tackles man they got marcus spears coming uh soft my guy's a sophomore they got terrell so yeah this team is loaded they might be better than florida this year those are the two best teams I've seen so far. Oklahoma is going to be right there with them, though. 94 senior quarterback. They got a sophomore who they're getting going. Jarvis Ball. He looks like he could be good. 
They got Michael Turner and Frank Gore, young running backs coming up. They got Brandon Lloyd as a junior at receiver and like good depth in behind them. Got Jeremy Shockey as a senior tight end. Uh, D defense, yeah, they're okay. Charles Tillman, I mean, they're good at corner this year. A linebacker there. Oh, they got young Lofa. A linebacker, they're fine. D tackle, they got a couple studs this year. Both upperclassmen, they got to get some depth, but really good this year. Nice. End. Yeah, no, this Oklahoma team might be the third best team I've seen. I don't think they're quite on Ohio State, Florida's level, but right there for sure. Uh, Penn State, they look okay. Uh, nothing crazy. Syracuse, they got Antoine Randall L. Might be probably the most exciting player in college football this year. Just absolutely right, lightning rod at quarterback. So it'll be interesting to see him. Uh, Tennessee, nothing really. Texas, Quentin Jammer. They did make the national championship. They got a nasty pair of corners, but uh, felt like it was kind of lucky to get there last year. They really, they don't have like those elite playmakers really that you'd like to see. And I don't know, who knows, but... I, I like Oklahoma way better for sure. AM's kind of in a weird spot. They are not what they used to be, but they have some superstars. Namgi Osmoa, Eli Manning, Steven Jackson, and a really good running back. Like that's enough to make do some damage. They don't have a ton at receiver. Like they got Michael Clayton is gonna be getting run for them this year. Yeah, like this team has superstar talent, not a ton of depth though. Uh, keep going down. UC UCLA is just building. They got David Carr with Aaron Rodgers in behind him. So A-Rod's going to start for the next three years after this. Um, nice, you know, decent running backs there. Wide receivers. Yeah, I mean, they're all old, so you got to get some recruits in, but uh, they're good this year. This team just consistently gets it done. Um, even if they're not the most talented, they always play really well through the sim. Troy on the back end, obviously, is a superstar. And yeah, I mean, they got Aaron Rodgers coming along. They have a 99 quarterback this year. I mean, yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be tough. USC is basically just kind of embarrassing at this point. And yeah, those are kind of our big teams right now. It'll be very interesting. I, I gotta say, Ohio State, Florida, Oklahoma look by far the three best to me, but uh, you never know. Okay, we are gonna sim till week nine and then we'll see where we are at. Okay, week nine, we're gonna look at our recruiting here, see where some of these big boys are looking. Oh no, Minnesota, they got three five-star quarterbacks in a year. I, like it's cool, like, but just none of them, will, like one of them won't play. Like literally Cutler might play his last year and might leave early. Matt Leinert goes to UCLA and they have freaking Aaron Rodgers. You're never going to play. Vince Young, at least. I mean, it'd be cool to see him at the U or Ohio State. Uh, and then Marcus Vick going to Nebraska. I like that fit. Kind of a triple option. He's going to be able to run the ball. That is a cool fit. These two kind of disappointing just because they're really not going to play. Hopefully they both get redshirted their first year, but D'Angelo Williams, another guy going to go to Oklahoma. They just got Frank Gore and Michael Turner over the last few years. Running back, it's not quite as bad as quarterback. Uh, Lorenzo Booker, Utah, UW, Cal, Fresno State. Wide out. This is going to be big. Santonio Holmes. That'd be kind of cool. Go play with A-Rod. I like that. Larry, go to Minnesota. They need a receiver. You have three quarterbacks. You could have two have career ending injuries and you'd still have Jay Cutler. So yeah, please go to Minnesota. That'd be sick. Devin, Florida just doesn't miss guys. They just keep getting them. Yep. Go to Florida. Wow, Devin. Okay. Mar oh, oh, it looks like he's going to go to Marshall. So he's going to take Randy Moss's spot at Marshall. Uh, like real life Moss. Um, Florida. Looks like they kind of gave up on him. I, I mean, I would have liked to get Brandon Marshall and Devin Hester if I was Florida. But Mercedes Lewis looking like UCLA, o Oklahoma looks like Texas in the lead, though. Tackle Eric Winston looking like TCU, Houston, Baylor. Guards, we got Davin Joseph looking like Oklahoma, UCLA, Nebraska. Blaylock looking like UCLA, Florida, Penn State. Centers, Nick Mangle going to UCLA is like UCLA is making moves, boys. Cameron Wimbley, Oklahoma. Uh, Brooks going to Georgia. Big kick up for them. And no one's really going after Merriman right now. So we'll have to see once he gets some more points open. BYU gets freaking Haloti. Not, not a hello. Kyle Williams looking like Texas, Oklahoma, AM. Uh, and then we just have uh, Brandon Merriweather looking like LSU is the most likely. So 
kind of disappointing with the QBs. The only one, like Marcus Vick is going to be cool. And I, I'd like to see Vince Young go to Ohio State just because you know he's always going to have a bunch of talent around him and he could put up some crazy numbers. But uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, let's look at top 25 here. So Florida undefeated Miami, Ohio State, UCLA, all undefeated along with Army. Uh, Oklahoma, Memphis undefeated who made Natty a few years ago. Syracuse, Georgia, BYU. Okay, so does Florida, they play Georgia this week. Miami plays Georgia Tech, Ohio State, nothing huge. UCLA, nothing crazy. Georgia Tech, we they have a tough schedule. Syracuse, Miami, Georgia. Oh yeah, Georgia Tech is not staying undefeated. I think we'll probably just sim to the conference championship. Usually we find a good game there. Let's look at the Heisman watch. Uh, Tim Boone at BYU. Uh, David Carr at UCLA trying to wrap up his UCLA career you know, with a natty, possibly. Antoine Ryan at Miami. So some kind of low. You, we usually it's our like kind of high high named level guys at the top there, but not right now. Passing leaders. That is the top. Uh, rushing. There we go receiving my yeah we knew clayton was gonna have a big year he's the only player at a and and he's playing with eli tackle leaders sack leaders and then interception leaders ed reed has four on the year so tied or just about in the lead in the country quickly look at some team stats uh total points per game oklahoma miami air force florida syracuse defense memphis ohio state florida army Okay, so conference championship weekend. Let's look at the top 25 here. Okay, so Florida staying undefeated along with Ohio State and UCLA. Syracuse, one loss. Oklahoma lost, but they don't have a game. Cal, two loss. Oh my God. Alabama. So it looks like Dabo is going to be safe at Bama, which I kind of like. Miami, AM, Penn State. Okay. These are some massive games. So like Syracuse, if they beat Miami and two of the teams lose, they got a shot to get in. Same with, you know, Cal, even if they beat, if Cal beats UCLA and Ohio State or Florida loses, they could easily get in. Um, but these three, I mean, you take care of business, you're in. I don't know which one I want to watch. I think UCLA, Cal, honestly, J Harrington and uh, Carr. Is that what we, I don't even remember what we watched, watched last year. That'll be like 20 minutes ago for you guys. It's like two days for me. Ohio State, Nebraska. I feel like that might be the We might have watched Ohio State, Nebraska, actually, I think, last game. Okay, let's look at Heisman watch real quick. So Antoine Ryan or Antoine Randall L. I'm kind of hoping it Randall L. He's had a cool career, man. Wow. He's just killed it at Syracuse. Boone, David Carr, and Josh McCown. We have some teams. I This was the year I thought Florida and Ohio State looked really, really complete. We're not going to watch this game. Nebraska's 8-4. and four. I mean, maybe they upset them, but we're just going to sim through. I'm sure Ohio State, yeah, they win 48-20. So they basically booked it. But if there's three unbeatens, who knows? Cal UCLA, that's a game I want to watch. I want to sim this Miami. This is a good game, too. We'll sim it, though. Let's see if Syracuse stays at one loss. They win an OT. So Syracuse they need a couple they need help though we need they need this game they need florida to lose um let's see AM beats florida the number one team in the country goes down oh my so ohio state's in now no matter what florida how do you lose that oh no so now this cal ucla game if ucla wins they're in it'll be them ohio state and this will be UCLA's if they make it. They made four in a row. They took off a year. Then they made another one, took off a year. Then they, they, they're making like six in like nine years or something ridiculous. But if they lose either Cal or Syracuse, probably Syracuse, but Cal will have two losses, but they'll have just beat an undefeated UCLA team. So it'll either be Cal or Syracuse in the big dance. David Carr ends up winning the Heisman and... Yeah, this could be his Heisman and second national championship if he gets it done. He's got to be in the discussion if he wins this player of the decade. So yeah, it's Ohio State, UCLA. Let's just get into it. We don't need to fuss. UCLA is actually coming in as the number one team now. These are two. This Ohio State team is freaking loaded. Like... Both teams really good on offense. Ohio State is the much better team defensively. But who knows? 
I mean, UCLA trying to win their fourth national championship of the sim, third in the last four, five years. And uh, yeah, this is their sixth appearance in like eight years. So Ohio State, third on offense, second on defense in points, and then fourth and fourth on yards. I mean, either team can win this 100%. They got superstars, basically no injuries for either team. I'm going, I'm leaning Ohio State. I think top to bottom, this team is like a, one of the better teams we've seen in the sim. Uh, but in UCLA, you cannot say anything about this team. They've been so consistent, so just top level through the whole sim. Or, well, really, I mean, since about the early 90s, they've just been right there. You know, on the doorstep or making the national championship basically every season. Okay, we're going to sim through the first quarter here. Ohio State, 7 nothing. UCLA answers right back. Oh, UCLA, or sorry, Ohio State goes right down and scores. I was going to watch some of that. Third and six, first and 10. Got a third and 13 for UCLA. This is not where they want to be. So one thing against Cal, who had a sh pretty crap defense, you do not want to be in the third and 13 with their type. Oh, free rusher off the edge. I was about to say against this Ohio State squad. You know, they're a bit of a different edge animal but there we go yeah car gets rocked off the edge ohio state's gonna get this ball back but they get sacked okay now ucla they're gonna punt the ball townsend lee evans 10 yard okay we got a third and 15 josh mccown in at quarterback for ohio state they're on a spread two by two look here lee evans is kind of their big time weapon they have larry johnson in it running back oh right into the linebacker but lee evans does hold on it's a bit of a suicide pass from mccown he is the new school record beats art schleichler um he was that 1970s quarterback for ohio state six yards okay they're running the ball now ucla this is what they want third and three can you stop the run the ohio state has a wicked interior d line there's one team that's built kind of to handle the ucla run game it is this team but okay they're gonna do a little oh that is a great call on third and three and they are gonna pick it up and ucla is kind of doing what they want to do on this drive which is run the ball but they get stopped a little bit there now it's third and ten this is a down 220 left how state you can get the ball back underneath that's gonna they might go for this oh we got an injury looks like that's probably their tight end and ucla is gonna go for this this is the play of the half right here Ohio state could get the ball back with about two minutes left a chance to drive or ucla has a chance to go tie it up right before the half this is a big down car quick throw underneath and i think that's lance briggs gets out there and swallows him up they had pressure in his face and that is why you have those all-american linebackers like lance briggs on the back end of your defense wow there we go okay now ohio state back to back like 20 yard passes second and 10 first and 10 from the 12 yard line we're gonna watch from here the ohio state with josh mccown in at quarterback two by two spread he's gonna slide he's got pressure fires a dot to lee evans and he gets a huge block and that's a touchdown ohio state josh mccown is having a wicked wicked first half um i think he was 198 yards and three touchdowns and now ucla is on the ropes a little bit here they definitely are going to want to try to go get at least a field goal before half they get stuck down to third and ten and this is this is where ucla basically can't like they can operate but like they are meant to be playing from ahead and being able to run the ball this is not where they want to be they do have the heisman winner in at quarterback he's going to set up he throws that's a they said he was out. That looked like it would have been a first down if he would have drug his foot, but they're gonna have to punt this ball and we'll see. Okay, yeah, they're gonna punt back. Oh, they hit it for 21. Five, second and five, third and five, three seconds left. Okay, yeah, so unless they get, you know, a Hail Mary type play here, that is gonna take us to the half. Uh, Ohio State's gonna have a big lead here. Car, oh my gosh, this D-line is giving UCLA all they can handle john henderson comes in like a bat out of hell and it is looking good for ohio state right now 
They get the ball. They hit Lee Evans for 23, but fumble. UCLA recovers. They got life. Third and five. Second and six, third and four, another huge down. They're six of 13 on third down. This Ohio State defense, like I said, is giving them all UCLA can handle. Let's see, gonna hand it off. Oh my goodness. This linebacking core for Ohio State is flying around. They're gonna punt that off. Cadillac Williams dropped by Lee Evans. First and 10, second and 10, third and two, fourth and five. They're gonna punt it. UCLA is gonna punt it. Okay, well, I'm just gonna go through the third quarter here. 21 7, 21 14, and UCLA's got the. Oh my goodness. Second and 13, third and five. UCLA has a chance to go tie this. The end of the third quarter, there was a fury. David Carr under center. What is the Ohio? Oh, he falls. Oh my God, he's going to fall over and got that ball. Oh my God, the running back got absolutely destroyed. But David Carr makes an incredible play to stay on his feet. Deliver that ball. We got third and goal here. Oh, baby. 21-14, UCLA trying to tie this up in the national championship. Car under center, motion, and oh, that was a great play. I don't know, it looks like a safety maybe comes up, and UCLA is going for it. This is the play of the day right here. Fourth and goal from the two-yard line. David Carr, Heisman winner, triple option, speed option, Carr's going to get it. Oh my gosh, he didn't get in. It looked like he could have walked in. He easily could have flipped it in. And Ohio State stops him about the one inch line. But they got to be careful. No safety. I Okay. Cadillac Williams, 100 yard rush touchdown. What just happened? It went from short by an inch to down 14 in two plays. Oh my goodness, Cadillac Williams, true freshman, goes for a 100-yard run. And now David Carr is on the ropes right here. Five minutes left, down two scores, third and 10. Oh my, they got their wishbone. Carr's going to drop back, he's gonna step up, fire. Oh my gosh, what a completion. Carr isn't going to say die. This guy is, he's keeping a minute. Oh, that's it. Ohio State fumble, third and 10. They pick it up. Yeah, this is over. Third and two. We'll watch this play. But yeah, this one's basically over. A couple of basically turnovers there. Turnover on the goal line and then a fumble there. And that is going to be the difference. They got Larry Johnson going downhill, punishing you. And that is basically going to do it. Ohio State is going to just hold them off. 35-21. Oh my God, they scored a late touchdown there, but Josh McCown's gonna kneel and that is it. Ohio State wins versus UCLA. Wow, so I think that's Ohio State's third, right? I think that's only three. We'll check in the off season here, but wow. They've been, they've been really good, man. They threw this whole sim. Woody Hayes has been so good for the Buckeyes. They have just elite talent. Him and Urban Meyer just have been killing it just with the talent. Always just running a tough offense. McCown, 394, four touchdowns. Uh, Cadillac, true freshman, has a 100-yard run. Uh, Lee Evans, he's only a sophomore, and he's playing like that. Uh, they have Braylon Edwards coming, coming up as well. UCLA, this James Jones killed it for them. Um rushing you know they did a, they, they had all their guys kind of running and david carr he played great this was not on him 423 and two touchdowns in the national championship really really good but yeah that's ucla sixth appearance seventh overall six and eighth year but they've only won two, one of them no they won two yeah they made three lost all three then they've made then they made two in a row and won them and now they then they lost this one but then they won one in like 1988 or something as well. I'll put the graphic on the screen here in a bit. You guys will be able to see it. But okay, I'm going to sit through the end of this week. And then we'll just kind of look at the year, year end stuff. Ohio State wins it 14-0. They had an incredible year. Oklahoma, UCLA, Alabama, Florida lost their last two. Penn State, Cal kind of at the top we already seen heisman but we'll look at it really quick so david carr antoine antoine randall l antoine ryan and antoine randall l randall l cool freaking career back-to-back 4300 yard passing with 44 touchdowns 842 and 849 yards like he pff, unreal josh mccown 
really good, especially these last two years. He was really, really good for um, for Ohio State. Leads him to a national championship. All Americans: Antoine Randall, L. Bryant McKinney, Terrell Suggs for uh, Ohio State, D.J. Williams for Florida. Big year for them. Philip Buchanan. He back to back. Thor. Okay. He had freaking 15 picks over his last two. Okay, he's got a added player of the 2000s. He's our first one. I mean, back to back Thorpes. Yeah, that's a good career. He was at, I wish they kept track of the All Americans. He was at least the last two years, might have been more. Um, Pac Man Jones, he went to Bama. He got returner. Matt McCown, Lee, or uh, yeah, Lee Evans. You know, two really good years so far at UCLA. Actually, we could just look at McCown again. So, yeah, like he had a really nice career. Uh, Jordan Gross, was he a f oh, he's a junior. John Henderson, he had a nice career for Ohio State, gets a natty out of it. Lance Briggs at Ohio State, big year. Uh, Cadillac Williams is another returner. Freshman Philip Rivers, this guy, if he doesn't get hurt, he's gonna put up some insane yet seeing stats as a four year starter. Ronnie Brown at the U981 is a freshman. Clayton 1380 is a fresh. They just have no one else. And they have Eli Manning throwing the ball. Uh, Logan Mankins for Texas. Demarcus Ware for Florida. They had, uh, man, they had a really good recruiting class. So Antoine Randall L led the country in passing. Josh McCown and Harrington on the list as well. Uh, there's rushing leaders receiving Clayton fourth as a true freshman. DJ Williams, Sachs, and INTs. Philip Buchanan led the country nine picks. Wow. So here's offense. Oklahoma, Ohio State, Texas, BYU, Florida. Defensively points. It was Michigan State, UCF, Ohio State. So Ohio State was... They're one of the better teams we've had in a minute. Okay, last thing, we're just going to go look at some of the top players and see how their careers wrapped up and who's back, all that good stuff. So, Joey Harrington, really good four years, three years as a starter, really nice numbers at Cal, you know, good career for sure. Josh McCown, same thing, we already looked at him. Carson Palmer, only a junior. He's going to be a four-year starter at Bama. They don't throw the ball quite as much, but he had, I think they had one loss this year, so Carson was really good. He's got a chance to be in the Heisman Trophy conversation for sure next year. Randall L was incredible his last two years. David Carr, he's never going to put up in this, the, that system insane stats, but he, like, he almost ran for a thousand yards this year, 2,600 yards. 26 plus 11 like 38 touchdowns really really good year byron left which he he transferred out of florida seneca wallace for the chippewas he's like an antoine randall l light oh rex grossman at michigan decent uh for your running back dante stalworth that he he never really played that much good like kind of change of pace back clinton portis 1100 yards this year uh, brian westbrook never really got a ton of run honestly at navy um jovan hughes how'd you do 1700 yards good career good year uh larry johnson just under a thousand yards he will be back for ohio state unless he leaves early willis mcgahee gonna be taking over at florida next year hasn't really got any run yet but he'll be the lead back for them next year receiver Dion branch i mean he plays at nebraska you're just not gonna get passes tcu he wow they did not use him andre whoa he must have got injured because he had 117 yards this year so he played like two games that's unfortunate uh roy williams kansas state never really did that much anquan bolden at the u a nice year this year brandon lloyd at oklahoma didn't do much okay tight end jeremy shockey i mean he's a tight 181 is that's not very much. Witten at Vandy, back back 500 yard years. Um, and Julius Peppers, he had 17 sacks in his career. OC um, has 12 and a half so far. Terrell Suggs, 12 and a half so far. Robert Mathis, 10 and a half so far. Uh, Jared Allen, only in his, he had seven and a half sacks this year. So he had a big year for Cal. Right end, nothing really. Deep tackle, we already looked at Henderson. Albert Hainsworth at Oklahoma. Uh, Kevin Williams at Arkansas. Kind of the big guys right now. Left outside, DJ. DJ was all American this year as a sophomore. Three INTs, four sacks, 50 tackle. That's a big year. Um, Right outside, Will Witherspoon's been, was, oh yeah. Benderek, Nagurski, and Buckus award winner. 
Uh, he had a great year this year too. He had a really just overall really good year, a really good career for uh, for Miami. Lance Briggs, we already looked at, and he'll be back next year. Corners, Quentin Jammer at Texas, seven picks. Philip Buchanan, we already looked at, was nasty. Terrence Newman's going to be back. Namdi Osmoa back for one more year. Hasn't really been as much of an impact since his freshman year. Asante Samuel, Charles Tolman. We've had a good, good, some good corners in the in the country so far, or over like the last few years here. Marcus Trufant, Ed Reed, going to wrap it up at Florida. He had four picks this year um that's kind of his numbers oh he got injured sean taylor only a sophomore hasn't played i think think a ton but he'll be taking over next year troy palomalu kind of looks like he's going to be back unless he leaves early um at ucla bob sanders at notre dame that is our players guys we are going to sim through the rest of the off season we're going to go to national signing day going to be very interesting to see why, where vince young goes i kind of am hoping ohio state they have some really good young players yeah i i think ohio state would be really cool okay national signing day oh let's see qb we knew jay we knew matt vince going to ohio state is down to that and the u ohio state gets a prize marcus vic, vic nebraska we knew we knew d'angelo lorenzo goes to fresno state uh santonio goes to ucla to play with freaking a rod i like that hester we knew and then it was like uc no it was marshall yeah marshall thunder and herd get uh brandon marshall mercedes lewis going to oklahoma it's a big pickup for them i think they had jeremy shockey last year right so they keep getting some tight ends eric winston going to houston guards davin going to nebraska blaylock going to florida uh mangle going to ucla Kent Wimbley uh, going to OU, Brooks going to Georgia, Merriman going to Florida. They got Kim and Demarcus Ware as their two pass rushers. Okay. Uh, D tackle, hello, D and then Kyle Williams going to Texas, and Brandon Merriweather, they're going to Western Kentucky. Let's just look at our top classes here. So Oklahoma, four, yeah, Georgia, Army, Nebraska, Minnesota, Florida, Notre Dame, Penn State, Ohio State. So there we go. Okay, we're just going to sim to the start of the next season. We're just going to look at the coaching and then we'll get to the uh, 2023, 2023, not 2023, 2003. Okay, let's look at our coach info. See who's fired, hired. So Barry's been at Boise forever, nine years now at Boise State. Bobby Bowden, uh, Mac Brown, now head coach of the Raging Cajuns. Pete Carroll staying at Colorado, got low. I mean, he's a seven and one in bowls. That's probably keeping around. He's been eight years at Colorado. Harbaugh safe for now at Georgia. Uh, Woody Hayes, obviously, 257 and 57. How many? He's won three national cha champions, I think, chips now, right? Yeah, three time national champion. Uh, if they ever fire him, Lou Holtz staying at Tulane. Don James, OC at Western Michigan. Jimmy safe at Miami. Chip low at Oregon. Urban, yeah, right. They obviously safe at Florida. Neyland low at Tennessee. Ed Orgeron back at LSU. Let's go. Okay, Ed, you get a second chance at LSU. Let's freaking make it count. Tom Osborne safe at Nebraska. Joe Paw safe for now at Stanford. Patterson hot seat at Hawaii. Nick Saban safe for now at Baylor. Shen Beckler safe at Penn State. Schnellenberger safe at Georgia Tech. Kirby safe at Georgia. Spurrier at OC. Dabo now safe at Bama. He had a really good past season at Bama. Barry Switzer safe at OU. Uh, Whittingham safe at USF. And that is it. That is our coaches. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Orgeron back at uh, LSU. Let's see what he can do there. So that's where I'm going to wrap it up, guys. Make the next recruiting class and we'll get right into it. All right, guys. So start of the 2003 college football season. Recruiting class is created. We are just going to get right into it. Really good class. My favorite college football player of all time is in this class. Um, I have a Madden YouTube channel. It's called King Reggie. I got my nickname. People in my life call me Reggie. And it was basically after 
Reggie Bush. He is in this class. He's my fi favorite college football player of all time, but we will get there. Okay. First quarterbacks, we got four. First, Jamarcus Russell. First overall pick of the Raiders. Obviously, was a bust in the NFL, but pretty good in college. An absolute physical freak. 6'6", 6 6'5", 6 6 250 pounds. Played at LSU. Insane arm. He's actually from the state of Alabama, though. So he's looking at Bama, Florida, Miami, Georgia Tech, Ohio State. Then we got Brady Quinn, kind of the golden boy. Played at at Notre Dame. He's a an analyst now in the NFL, really good in college, was a first round pick in the NFL by the Browns. Uh, he's from Ohio. He's looking at Florida, Bama, Georgia, Texas A&M, Ohio State. Uh, then we got Chris Leak played at Florida with Tim Tebow. He was the starter when Tebow was a freshman when they won the national championship, the first one. Um, he's from North Carolina. He's looking at Duke, Georgia, Georgia Tech, Wake Forest, North Carolina. And then the last one is Dennis Dixon. Now, he played at Oregon Athletic, fast QB, um, Good in college, not great in the NFL, but played in the NFL. I think he played for the Steelers. Uh, looking at Ohio State, Texas, Florida, Syracuse, Miami. So four, like, it's a good group of quarterbacks. They're not like that Hall of Fame, all pro Heisman winners necessarily. But, I mean, one of them could easily... Know, accomplish something similar so then we got our running backs we got three first michael bush he played at louisville bigs oh i mean uh, he's supposed to be six two not six four i don't know why the last few times of making recruiting class i've been screwing up he's supposed to be six two i don't know why i made him six four but basically like kind of a derrick henry mold like really big powerful can run was never as good as henry but uh, he's looking at notre dame ohio state michigan nebraska then like i said we got reggie bush my favorite player of all time he's from Cali played at USC. Uh, he's looking at Oklahoma, which I actually would really like. UCLA, I would really like. Nebraska, I would really like. He's going to run the ball if he goes to any of those three schools. So actually, those three schools, go to one of those. Florida would be cool just because he'd play with insane talent, but they don't really run that much. Texas, Michigan, Georgia also on the list. Then Maurice Jones Drew is the other one, also from Cali. He went to UCLA in real life, but he's looking at Stanford, Washington, Cal, USC, uh, Colorado. Going to wide receivers, we only got two. We got Robert Meacham, who played at Tennessee he played with the Saints in the NFL he's from Oklahoma he's looking at Florida Nebraska Ohio State Oklahoma Bama and then the other one is Steve Smith he's from Anchorage Alaska he played at USC on those like Reggie Bush Matt Leinart teams he's looking at AM, Georgia Florida Arkansas Nebraska tight ends we actually have a couple of nasty tight ends the first one Vernon Davis one of the most physical freak tight ends of all time ran like a 4-3 at the combine at like 250 uh he's looking at Ohio State Notre Dame Penn State Florida he played at Mar uh, Maryland in real life then the other one is Greg Olson played at Miami but he is from uh New Jersey really good tight end with the Bears and then the Panthers call uh color commentator for fox right now in the nfl uh looking at penn state Rutgers, syracuse so i'll kind of stay in that northeast kind of area uh, if we go tackles we only got one but it's a all hall of famer debatably a top five tackle of all time we have joe thomas he's from wisconsin played for the badgers but he's looking at ohio state o oklahoma ucla texas baylor uh if we go down to guards we have none we just have a center though we have one center it is john sullivan uh from connecticut kit he played at uh notre dame in real life played a long time in the nfl he's looking at notre dame ohio state penn state florida okay then we go to defensive ends we got three of them first to lawrence jackson played at usc um from cali on those kind of you know ch national championship teams uh like the 03 0 04 teams he's looking at usc ucla cal washington then we got mario williams who is actually the first overall pick in the nfl draft ahead of reggie bush and vince young uh played at north carolina state uh, one of the freakiest football players of all time 6'6 280 ran like a 454 like absolute just freak show uh looking at florida ucla nebraska oklahoma whoever gets him oh my god if florida gets him right now they have demarcus Ware and sean merriman right now if they got him too that would be the craziest pass rushers i've ever seen then we have lamar woodley who is an outside linebacker pass rusher type for the steelers played at michigan he's looking at michigan ohio state michigan state notre dame we have one d tackle at cedric ellis from cali also played on those really good uh usc squads it's like a top 10 pick by the saints i believe saints maybe uh ucla cal oklahoma texas ohio state were his uh are where he's looking uh, if we go outside linebacker, we have none. We have one middle, though. Oh, no, it should be, he should be an outside, actually. Oh, right here. 
Uh, Ernie Sims is our outside linebacker, super high level recruit. He played at Florida State. He's from the state of Florida. I think he was a pretty high pick in the NFL draft too, but like a top five recruit in the country, super athletic on the smaller side, but can really run Florida, Ohio State, Oklahoma, UCLA, Georgia. Uh, we only have one corner, but he is a freak. Antonio Cromarty. I loved this guy growing up. I played DB growing up. Like I played safety corner. And uh, I loved Antonio Cromarty. He was just so sick with the Chargers. Played at Florida State. Another guy who was like a big time recruit. 6'2", 210, ran like a 4'3". Looking at Florida, Miami, Georgia, Oklahoma, Bama. Then we actually have a really good safety class here. So we have two frees, I think. We got Michael Griffin, who played at Texas. He was on the 05 Texas team, played for like the Titans in the NFL. He's looking at Oklahoma, Alabama, AM, Florida. Then uh, LaRon Landry played with the Reds, uh, their skins, uh, played at LSU. Apps like look just humongous guy. Looks like he's roided up. He probably was, but who knows? Uh, he's from Louisiana. He's looking at Florida, Nebraska, Ohio state bama oh there's one more and then there's a strong and then we have reggie nelson he played at florida really good like free safety type really rangy on the back end gonna look at ucla ohio state florida oklahoma then we have one strong safety it's dante whitner dante hitner playing for he played at ohio state made his name with the niners in the nfl so he's from ohio but he's looking at florida nebraska ohio state georgia alabama so really cool class i like this class really you know pretty balanced throughout we kind of have players at each spot so it'll be very interesting to see where everyone ends up and like i said reggie bush is my favorite college football player of all time and i can love those three schools he might go to if he goes to any of those that'd be sick just because they're gonna run the ball they're like the three teams that run the ball the most so it would be kind of cool to see what numbers reggie could put up in those schemes so we're gonna do all our preseason stuff so this is gonna be basically the halfway point of this video number four guys so oh three this is gonna go till the end of the oh five season so about halfway through this video right now ohio state a plus across the board including special teams they're defending national champions they look scary we got oklahoma uh a pluses you know a a defense but really good 99 yeah florida right there with ohio state have a wor a slightly worse um special teams though bama okay this is the best bama team we've seen in a minute ucla i mean ucla literally can't stop making national championships so who knows they could easily get back there they have aaron Rodgers now georgia penn state looks decent syracuse and mizzou look all right texas texas looks really good actually holy notre dame looks all right um cal looks pretty good miami kind of miami's starting to fall a little bit here nebraska looks pretty good a m looks all right a m has some superstars still michigan looks okay um is there any team lsu looks okay yeah there's not like an a a plus it got really buried um let's look at heisman watch so sean fernando okay we got philip rivers only a sophomore this guy Philip Rivers could break some records starting for four years in that offense. He's the only one of our like not, not auto generated guys. So look at preseason All Americans. Uh, Caldwell at QB. Lee Evans has had two really nice years to start his career at Ohio State. Lance Briggs has been really good for Ohio State. Adam Pacman Jones as a returner for Bama. Philip Rivers, uh, Anquan Bolden going to be a senior for Miami. One team we got to make sure we look at is Minnesota, actually. I didn't notice them in the rankings, but Tommy Harris, SMU, DJ Williams for Florida. Yeah, because Minnesota's got those quarterbacks. They got, I think they got three QBs now, and they got Larry Fitzgerald. So I, I'm kind of excited to see what they can do. Uh, if we look at Bama, they have Carson Palmer this year. This is kind of their big, big year. They... You know, they have made, debatably the best quarterback in the country. Cal, um, they lost Joey Harrington. They got this Demetrius Allen at QB. Yeah, they haven't been able to lock down that next QB because I've really liked what they've done over the last few years. Obviously, they've been really good. Uh, it'd be nice. Like, they got Jared Allen. They got some good players, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to keep up with ucla right now so ucla just looks like they're going to run the pac-12 they don't really have pal is their kind of competition and they're really not at the level then we have this freaking florida team man they got philip rivers for the next three years unless he leaves early so i mean who knows um 
They got Willis McGahee at running back. They actually could use a, a big time freshman. They'll probably start this Corey Johnson this year, but if they could get Michael Bush or Reggie Bush or whatever, that'd be huge for them. You got Jericho Cautry, this Andy Dukes, and freshman Devin Hester playing in the slot. So Hester is going to start for them in the, like for four years. They are just loaded. I, uh, they just recruit so well. Uh, we got Georgia. Looks pretty good. They got like a big threesome at the top. Asante, Kellen, Benjamin Watson. LSU and Miami. Both I thought were kind of starting to climb up and both have just kind of kind of started to sputter. You know, Miami still gets a few good players, but they don't have that. You know, they don't have those elite guys coming in right now. They have nobody at QB. So I don't expect a ton from Miami this year. We got Miami of Ohio. Andre Johnson as a senior. His first two years were incredible. He got hurt last year. He does have a good QB and 91 junior throwing him the ball. So be interesting. There was a few years where they were really in on some big time recruits. Haven't really noticed them last week. Two years really being in on guys, though. Michigan has sexy Rexy at QB Rex Grossman and um yeah like some good they, they, Michigan has a chance this year they're kind of in the same similar spot of Alabama big time senior quarterback and like decent depth throughout Minnesota this is just an interesting team there they got Sean Cody and they got the, their QB room is just stupid Joe Maurer Alex Smith, Jay Cutler. Joe Maurer didn't really play last year. Oh, they actually started Alex Smith over Joe Maurer, but Joe Maurer much better now. Yeah, just, just a wild collection. And then they have Larry Fitzgerald is going to be their number one receiver this year. Nebraska, pretty good. Uh, yeah, like, and they're deep. They do a really good job of just consistently. Oh, and they got Marcus Vick. So they're going to start this Darren Hutchinson this year, probably. And then they'll have Marcus Vick starting for three years. That'd be kind of cool to see Marcus Vick in this kind of triple option offense could work. Um, Notre Dame, you know, they're they're not like an embarrassment, whatever, but they are just not at the level. But they fired freaking our guy. They they fired Lou Holtz and, and it made no sense and they kind of deserve it. And then we got no Ohio State right now, Florida and Ohio State, just as far as talent these two, I don't know what this means. So they got Vince Young, but he already has a transfer thing. I don't know if that's a glitch. I don't know if somehow he transferred before the season even started. I really don't know what that means. So I don't know. I don't know if he's transferring out. They technically have Vince Young. They got these two quarterbacks for the next two year or two, and then they'd have Vince Young. But I don't know if he's going to leave. Then they have Larry Johnson, Cadillac Williams, Cedric Benson, Lee Evans, this Duckett, and Braylon Edwards, and more guys down the line. Two nasty tight ends. They both are uh, seniors, though, so they're going to have to recruit there. Uh, their defense, ooh, secondary is definitely, they have good corners, but their secondary is not at the level of uh, Florida. Oklahoma, another team that's just been really consistent through the whole sim. They got this Jarvis ball. They don't really rely on having the best quarterback right now either. And they've look at their running backs. They've been getting Michael Turner, Frank Gore, D'Angelo Williams, still a Brandon Lloyd at receiver. They're going to need a receiver here soon because they're all kind of getting older. But Oklahoma easily could make make the big dance this year. Penn State, Similar to Bama, Michigan, been good, but, uh, you know, they've won a natty at least, but the last maybe decade, they've been just all right. Um, Tennessee, never really done anything the whole sim. Texas made the natty two years ago. They're 97 overall right now. I don't know if I really see it. They do have some good players, but I don't know. They just have not. They have not really done much through the sim. They're definitely like deeper. They, they have pretty decent talent throughout. AM kind of has just some stars at the top. And then I don't know. They don't really have the depth da going down. They have Eli, Steven Jackson, Namdi Osamwa, and they have Mark Clayton, who's only a sophomore. But like you're already, when you go just down a little bit, they're already getting into like low 80s, just barely going down. So they do they have star power, but not the depth. Uh UCLA, this team, I mean what can you say they've been to the natty six times in eight years their qb room they got a true fresh or redshirt freshman aaron Rodgers is going to start for the next few years they also have a freshman matt leinert in the room um running back they don't have a stud but they have good guys uh wide receiver they just got santonio holmes they're in the running for reggie bush this team like they don't have the high end talent of florida like throughout the whole roster like you get down here with ohio state and florida they're at 95 so at the bottom of that front of their list so like 
but they they're in a weaker pack they don't really have that other team to really compete with and they're just getting it done they win they just win baby uh usc done nothing really done nothing the whole sam washington had a nice run in the 90s but that is where we are at guys so i'm gonna sim till week nine and then we'll take a look at where we're, we are at all right so week nine let's take a look at recruiting here qb okay some small schools and then florida for jamarcus uh brady quinn notre dame bama one two i mean notre dame that'd be a huge pickup uh chris leak going to duke okay locked in dennis dixon notre dame stanford florida okay so all pretty interesting they're running back michael bush either nebraska maybe tennessee reggie nebraska or florida uh, it'd be cool to see him at florida because they have so much talent but i kind of hope nebraska just because he's gonna run the ball so much uh and then michael uh maurice jones drew looking like uw colorado i kind of hope he goes to colorado with pete carroll just let him run the ball and have some fun uh robert meacham going to ou they needed a receiver i remember saying that so that's big for them georgia maybe a and m for steve smith vernon davis uh notre dame ohio state penn state uh notre dame if they got him and brady quinn notre dame might be on the path to being back greg olson rutgers vautech marshall tackle joe thomas oklahoma or ucla what that would just be massive for either of those teams john sullivan might go to notre dame so notre dame looking like they could be back a little bit here uh, Lawrence Jackson looked like UC, USC or UCLA. Mario, Oklahoma or UCLA. Um, Lamar Woodley, Michigan State, Ohio State, Michigan. Cedric Ellis, Oklahoma, Oklahoma's making some moves too, man. Uh, outside, Ernie Sims, Oklahoma. Okay, OU, coming for people's throat. Antonio Cromartie might go to Oklahoma. Maybe Bama or Florida. Ever, okay. Put some respect on Oklahoma's name. Michael Griffin, Oklahoma. Reggie Nelson, A&M. Uh, Landry, Nebraska, Georgia, Bama. And then our last one is going to be Dante Whitner. He's going to either Georgia or Cincinnati. So Oklahoma, really? I mean, they, I don't. A lot of those guys aren't locked in yet. But if they, like, yeah, they're not even in the top ten right now. But if they can close, yeah, they only have three guys signed: Meacham and Griffin. But they have three: Meacham, Griffin, and Sims already. And they, if they unlock in some more of those guys, they could, they could have a class. I like Notre Dame. Florida was looking good. UCLA was all right. So that's kind of where we're sitting. Let's look at the top 25 here. So Ohio State, 6-0. Georgia, Baylor, Michigan, UCF. Uh, OU, UCLA, Bama, Florida, A&M, Nebraska, Army, all one loss. Arkansas, Cal. Got some smaller schools here um, with no losses. So Florida, Georgia, we got Baylor, OU coming up here. Ohio State, because Michigan's not good. Oh, Michigan's number four right now. So we could maybe watch Michigan, Ohio State. But it's probably better just to go to the conference championships. You're, you're Usually we're going to find a pretty decent game. Like last year, the conference championships were insane. This Baylor, Oklahoma game is really big this week. Baylor doesn't really have anybody that's worth watching necessarily as far as like real life players. But if they beat Oklahoma uh, and there's five and oh, and like that's their big game left on their schedule, like their super tough game. They still got Texas, TCU, but that's huge. Georgia, Florida this week that is a massive game loser i mean georgia still has a chance if florida loses this game they are basically out i might even just advance a week here just to see what the the final of those two games let's advance a week and then i'll look at the rest of that stuff okay so we're just one more week ahead here so georgia beat florida florida has two losses they're basically done georgia is now the number one team in the country the other game oklahoma beat baylor pretty handedly so they're they're the best one loss team right now as far as the rankings bama has a pretty easy run here they just got to get past lsu nebraska plays michigan so michigan nebraska that's actually a big game then michigan ohio state yeah i might sim till the last game of the year just because watching michigan ohio state's always fun so i'm gonna sim to that game and then we'll see if it's really worth a lot then we can watch it if it's kind of like eh then we'll we'll just go to the conference championship game like as far as records here's just kind of the leaders right now bolden 
There's tackles. Sean Taylor leading the country in tackles. Uh, Demarcus Ware, seven and a half sacks. And there's interceptions. Look quickly, at team stats here. Points per game. Iowa. Oh my gosh, we don't even have one team at 40 points a game. So offense is a little down this year. Defensively, TCU, UCF, Ohio State, Oklahoma up there. So yeah, we're going to sim to that Michigan-Ohio State game. And uh, yeah, if they're both undefeated, we'll watch that. Okay, they're both one loss michigan ohio state so let's look at the top 25 oh goodness mid tennessee state and ucf might be our freaking national championship oh my goodness then we also have oklahoma ucla florida so it's really gonna be yeah it's gonna be up to what if those teams lose at all because i don't want to see mid tennessee state ucf finals I'm, I'm just gonna sim to conference championship weekend and we'll see where we're at okay so mid tennessee state is still undefeated they play North Texas this week. We got Ohio State, so they beat Michigan. Oklahoma, one loss. UCLA, one loss again. Florida, oh, wow. We don't really have a big time. Maybe we'll watch Washington, UCLA. I, I kind of want to see Aaron Rodgers. These are not the best conference championship games. Okay, well, let's sim this mid-Tennessee State game. We'll just sim it and see. If they lose, all bets are off. We don't know who's going to be in. So North Texas, one loss, Mid-Tennessee State, Conference USA. And okay, North Texas actually kind of pumped them. So Mid-Tennessee State is going to be out. So that opens the door. Now we have Oklahoma, one loss, Ohio State, one loss, UCLA, one loss. I think it's down to those four. Uh, maybe Florida has two losses, but they didn't even make their conference championship game. So, oh, Georgia has one loss too. But I, I want to watch Washington UCLA. Just cause I want to see Aaron Rodgers. We got freshman Aaron Rodgers leading the way for UCLA. Let's see what happens. If freaking UCLA makes another national championship, that would be seven in nine years. They've only won two, but absolutely insane. They have the best defense in the country. A really good offense. They're rushing for over 300 yards per game. And they have freaking Aaron Rodgers at QB. Dodd has almost two. He has over 2,000 total yards. They're running back. Okay, we're going to sim through first quarter here. Oh my God, I wasn't even paying attention. It's 21. It was 21 nothing UCLA. I was looking at my recording screen. What the heck? Aaron Rodgers. Oh my God. Oh, okay crap okay i thought it was ucla down inside the 10 so uw i mean they're down 21 nothing they got you know a touchdown at least they got the ball so maybe they can go 90 yards and tire you know get this within a score you oh ucla comes up and fills on that run though yeah, i was not even paying attention i was looking at my recording making sure everything was going all right and i looked down as 21 nothing let's go oh okay so UCLA is driving here. Santonio Holmes for 17 yards. A-Rod and Santonio Holmes, both freshmen together. That's a pretty nasty combo when you factor in how good of a running team this team is. A-Rod uh, fires. Oh, picked. Rodgers picked off in the end zone. The freshman makes a mistake. Don't want to see that from A-Rod. Um, okay, let's go through this draw. Okay, but they got it right back and then fumbled. We're covered by Washington. UCLA gets it back. 24, second and 10, first and 10, second and five. Okay, let's just watch this drive here. Oh my goodness. UCLA has 369 total yards in the first half right now. Okay, going to hand it off here. Ooh, going down third and six. UCLA, man, with the, the talent they have, this could get kind of crazy, especially because there's just not another team in the Pac-12 right now that has that, like, high-end talent. Um, Directing traffic, going to drop back. Oh, oh, my. That was an Aaron Rodgers throw. On the run, that was like a no-look cross-body dime to Santonio Holmes. Okay, A-Rod for the Bruins drops back, back corner, touchdown and ucla they have a chance to make their seventh national championship in nine years i'm a little flabbergasted we're gonna go to the end of the quarter here third and inches they score it is 34 7 they are gonna blow the doors off washington 
And uh, yeah, I mean, if style points count for anything, th there's going to be a bunch of teams with one loss, depending on you know how all these conference championships games go. And UCLA just put a stamp on that game saying we were in it last year. We've made it six times. Give us another shot. <laughs> They've won two as well. So it's not like... Uh, they did beat Ohio State in 98. They beat Baylor in 2000. They lost in 02. They lost in 97, 96, and 95. Go back to our scores and schedules here. So we're just going to kind of... Ohio State... We have a really good chance of it being Ohio State, uh, UCLA again. Obviously, Ohio State has to win this one. They win by three. Barely beat Iowa, but they do. Arkansas, Georgia. These are both one loss. I didn't even see notice Arkansas with one loss. So the winner of this game has a shot to make it. Arkansas beats Georgia in overtime. Uh, so yeah, we have Ohio State one loss, Oklahoma one loss. So they have a chance. It's just they're in a they're in a position where they don't have a conference championship game. This is similar to what happened to um Notre Dame. I wonder if I should move them to the Pac-12. Give the Pac-12, just because they don't have a conference championship game, maybe I'll move like them and Texas or something and make the Pac-12 just really strong. Give UCLA a little more competition. And Oklahoma doesn't have a conference championship game. So, hmm, maybe I'll do that. We'll kind of do a little realignment thing here. UCLA has a chance. Arkansas has a chance. Florida is basically out. It's basically between Ohio State, Oklahoma, UCLA, Arkansas. Four teams, one loss. Who are you going to pick? I think it's going to be Ohio State, UCLA rematch in last year, if I had to guess. But Oklahoma, maybe I'll get in. UCLA Dodd wins the Heisman. over Well over 2,000 yards. None of our, like the real life guys really in the running this year. It is. It's Ohio State, UCLA once again. Rematch of last year. So Arkansas at playing Oklahoma. Oh, uh, Arkansas playing Oklahoma. Those are the three, four. That were those were the teams that just missed. So you, UCLA has now made the natty guys. They made it in 1989. Then they didn't make it for a while. Then they made it in 95, 96, 97, which were all losses. They made it 98, which was a win. They made it in 2000, which was a win. They made it in 02, which is a loss. And they made it in 03. That is actually insane. I'm going to do some realignment this offseason because I do think they're kind of skating by with a somewhat easy schedule because USC's down, Oregon's down. Um, you know, there's just Stanford's not great. Cal was decent with Brady, but they, they're, and Harrington, but they don't have that big time QB now. So I think I'm going to put Oklahoma, Texas in the Pac 12 because they have a conference championship. Big 12 doesn't. And um, just kind of make a bigger conference there. And just give UCLA some more, you know, some more challenges. And Oklahoma kind of gets screwed by not having that conference championship game because now they finish with one loss just like UCLA, but they don't have another game to kind of keep pace. So I just think it's going to work a little better. So on paper, UCLA looks better for sure. Talent wise, it is for sure uh, Ohio State, but... Larry Johnson, there's basically no injuries. This is anybody's ballgame, guys. Ohio State trying to go back to back. This would be Ohio State's fourth national championship win. This would be UCLA's fourth as well. No, this, yeah. Yeah, they've got three. So the winner of this is going to have their fourth national championship, tying AM for the most in the sim. Arkansas has three. Florida has two, I think. Florida's been a low-key a bit of a disappointment for how good their recruiting is. To only have two natties right now is kind of crazy to me. When the winner of this game is going to have four. Now let's go next quarter here. 7-0 seven UCLA, 7-7. Seven, 7-7 seven. Seven, seven right now. Fourth and three. Fair catch. Okay, so this is Ohio State on offense. Third and 11 here. Let's see what Ohio State can do. We'll probably watch a bit of this drive. Then we'll watch a bit of UCLA. And then I'll probably go to the half. This is where, I mean, this guy's actually, I guess, pretty good rate. Oh, that's a great job to come up and get that second guy in for the tackle. He broke the first one, Nielsen, but goes down. Um, okay, now here's A-Rod and UCLA, first and 10, second and inches, first and 10, second and set. Look at him just running the ball on Ohio State. They've not, that was their first pass attempt right there, and they score Santonio San Holmes, 23-yard touchdown, huge for Ohio State. 
or sorry, UCLA, Ohio State needs to answer. Fumble recovered by UCLA. Dodd, second and 12. Second and 17, third and eight. Okay, let's see what A-Rod can do on third and eight. Wow. UCLA, 13-7. They're going a heavy wishbone set here. Probably going to run or pass the ball, though. A-Rod drops back. All right, checks down. Yeah, it's going to be. Got to get a little more aggressive there. They are going to punt that football. Okay, Ohio State, minute 30 left. Can you answer before the half? No, not even close. And Rodgers hits Jenkins for 33 yards, 50 seconds left, third and 12. Okay, let's see what A-Rod can do. 33 seconds, you're out of field goal range. He's only three of seven, so they have not tried to pass the ball at all. They have a chance to take a big lead before the half. They need a huge conversion here, though, from Rodgers. And, oh, they're going to do, oh, yeah, I hate that freaking call. Hate, hate that call. You have Aaron freaking Rodgers, and now you're going to punt that football. Okay, we're gonna, that's going to be the halftime. And you, uh, Ohio State cannot get anything going on this UCLA defense. Third and 15 for Rodgers. So we got a bit of a defensive game here. See if Rodgers can let it fly a little bit here on this third and 15. Are they going to be just super non-aggressive? They do have the number one defense in the country. So maybe they're like, hey, we don't need to play insanely aggressive. We're going to keep our you know cards close to our vests and... So Rogers, four second, three, two, drops back, blitz, fires it over the middle. Oof. That's Michael Dodd, Heisman winner. Um, just tackled short though. Ohio State's defense is, you know, keeping them right in it as well with their their offense being kind of meh right now. Cadillac Williams getting a lot of run here, second and 12. First and 10 hit Braylon, then Benson. Okay, this is the Ohio State we were expecting, but they kind of are starting to sputter here. Third and eight. They need a conversion. Now, this guy's a good college quarterback, but he's not that Aaron Rodgers, like, next-level player. So, they have uh, – oh, that's a touchdown. Touchdown. Wow. So, I was going to say they have Vince Young. I think – oh, that's Braylon Edwards as well. They have a nasty – Lee Evans, Braylon Edwards is a nasty combo. Braylon, that 6'3", 215, like, outside weapon. Lee Evans, a speedster. But, yeah, they have Vince Young on the bench. So, they have their, like, super all-pro college football player – waiting in the wings i don't know what that whole transfer thing was about though i don't know if he's trying to transfer out i kind of hope not i think it'd be cool to see him at ohio state with the skill level around him but we'll see here's a big third and nine rogers just about the end of the third quarter here drops back fires no great break up there for ohio state and now ucla is in a bit of trouble here for ohio state they're at that your own eight yard line though cadillac gets a couple of ooh, cadillac 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 doing work. Lee Evans for 13. Braylon for 13. Burnett, third and two. End of third quarter. Fourth and two. They go for it and they pick it up. Wow, what a drive. Okay, we got third and one for Ohio State. What a drive. They start at their own eight-yard line. They are chewing clock. They could go make this an eight-point game right now, and that puts UCLA in a tough spot. Triple option. They pick it up. Is that Cedric Benson? Because I think Larry, no, that's that's uh, Cadillac. Uh, yeah, Cadillac has 144 on the ground. He had a, you remember last year in the net, he had a 100-yard rushing touchdown against UCLA. And he just goes for eight more there. UCLA is going to have nightmares about Cadillac Williams. He could cost them two national championships right here. Back-to-back -back years. He's only a sophomore right now as well. Going to do a little midline read option and Martin Burnett gets into the end zone and ohio state just needs an extra point they're gonna go up eight points so there is still 6 30 but now, this is not where ucla wants to be they do not want to be playing from behind and now they need a touchdown and a two-point conversion just to tie it 5 30 left third and seven rogers drops back they're gonna do draw again but they pick it up this time michael dodd they give it to the heisman winner i hate the call still i don't care if it works you run draw on third and 10 with five minutes left in the natty okay but then he hits dodd for 20 to rogers second and two first and 10 from the 12 second and two from the four UCLA is not going to die here, folks. They're going I form under center goal line. They're going to do a toss to Dodd, the Heisman winner. Oh, he's going to be short. One yard short. I mean, I, this is probably four down territory. Either way, Lance Briggs with the tackle. Um, if you're UCLA, like, you don't want to try to get drive down here again. So, um, wishbone 
Triple option. You, oh, A-Rod keeps it and gets in. I, that is the thing with A-Rod. He's a low-key guy. I think I gave him like 83, 84 speed. So he can do enough in the run game to be dangerous. Okay. Play of the day right here. UCLA can tie it. If not, all of a sudden there's three minutes left. Ohio State gets the football back and they have a two-point lead. They're going to do a handoff to A-Rod. Don't love that as much without that. That wasn't even a triple option or anything. Now... Ohio State has a chance to just kind of run this out. Four-yard run, 11-yard run by Cadillac. Four-yard run, three-yard run. Okay, we got third and three, three minutes left. A huge play right here. Cadillac Williams has been shredding UCLA. They're going to do a little rollout with Burnett. Oh, he's going to drop. Nope, that's going to be short. UCLA has a shot, ladies and gentlemen. I don't love that play call by Ohio State. UCLA gets it on their own like 20. A-Rod. We got third and six already for A-Rod here. Burnett's just been okay for Ohio State. A-Rod, third and six. They could run draw. They could run the ball. They, they do that. No, nope. they're going to do their own little half roll. And Rodgers going down. Rodgers rolls into the sack. T-Sizzle's got 10 tackles, five TFLs, and a sack for Terrell Suggs. Okay, T-Sizzle, and this is basically the ball game. UCLA does have three timeouts, but now Ohio State's going to get this at UCLA's 20. Oh, my God. They brought an insane blitz. He's going to make it. Oh, my gosh. How did Rod? I thought they had no chance. Insane blitz from Ohio State. Some Max Rogers in the face, and he's able to dump it off to Dodd, who scrambles for 10. Third and six. Pick up Cowan. Oh, my God. They just hit a 32-yard gain down to the 18. Okay, we're just going to watch from here. Oh, my God. UCLA can win this. UCLA's probably going to win this. 30 seconds left. They just need a field goal. That fourth down conversion from Rodgers. And he's going to get a first down here. As long as he doesn't fumble. Go one more play. What just happened? I, I don't know what just happened. I just super simmed one more play to get it because I thought they were just going to run the ball. Did they fumble? Can I see? It just said end of game. Ohio State wins. There's 28 seconds left. UCLA was down two inside the 10. What just happened? Like, I, I, is there a play summary? Yo, that's annoying. I, it literally just is like, okay, game over. Did like they fumble or something? I, I, I literally don't know what happened. Um, here's the stats. Raylan had a huge day for sophomore. Cadillac was incredible. I, I don't know what happened and I, I don't have any way of like going back and looking because usually I can just like look at the super sim and I'll say what happened, but the super sim has gone now. Okay. I don't know. Uh, sorry guys. This is an old game. It's an NCAA 14. Sometimes the super sim and stuff can get super weird. It is really annoying. I don't know. I don't know what happened. They must have fumbled the next play. And then they just took a knee somehow. Could have been like a weird glitch. I don't know, but Ohio State won. I, I don't know. They won back to back. They beat UCLA two years in a row. I don't know. UCLA had it with 20 seconds left down two inside the five. Ah, that kind of sucks. I don't know. I just tried. I literally just pressed. I didn't even sim rest the game. I said sim one play and it just shot it to the end of the game. So sorry about that, guys. Um, Ohio State wins their fourth. We can, like, in our brains, we could be like, hey, UCLA, I don't know, maybe kind of won it. But as far as in the system and stuff, when we're looking at stats and stuff, that's going to literally be Ohio State's fourth national championship. They are going to tie Texas A&M, who won a bunch in the 80s. Ohio State now, you you have got to kind of call them the team of the sim right now. They have tied for the most natties, been the most consistent as far as making the game. You know, the, how many have they made now? They've won, made two, three, five. They've made five and they've won four, I think. Or maybe they made six and won four. But yeah, so wow. I'm, I'm a little flabbergasted from that game, but UCLA just coming up short again. Arkansas ended up beating Oklahoma, Florida, Texas, UCLA, Oklahoma, Michigan, Georgia. Heisman, we already seen Michael Dodd win it. And I mean, he'll be back next year. He's got a chance. Look at his stats over his career. 16, 15, and 2,000 yards. If he comes back, he's got a chance to be insane stats. Okay. I didn't really realize that he was putting up numbers like that. Um, Owens. Adam Owens gets 
gets it. Uh, Michael Dodd, obviously. Uh, Gross. Robert Gallery at Oklahoma. D'Angelo Hall and Sean Taylor, both juniors. Ooh, Sean T had a big year. Four sacks, three picks, 61 tackles, two forced fumbles. D Hall had three picks this year. Second team, Seneca Wallace, Central Michigan. Uh, 3,800 yards, really good runner too. You had 945 running, so he had a great year. Uh, Demarcus Ware, DN Florida, nine and a half sacks as a sophomore. Okay, Ware. Charles Tillman at OU, his last season. Freshman, A Rod wins it for freshman. I mean, yeah. 21 touchdowns, three picks. Also ran for 655 and threw 10 touchdowns. Lorenzo Booker, Devin Hester for uh, Florida, Nick Mangold, Blaylock, Ahmad Brooks at Georgia. That's it for all Americans. Seasons of Prince and Owens leading the way. Seneca Wallace, Brock Berlin there. Dodd, third in the country in rushing. Here's receiving. Tackles. Sean T led the country in tackles. Uh, Demarcus Ware, third in sacks. There's our ints. So did anyone finish with over 40 points per game? Okay, Arkansas, Iowa, Central. So Iowa has a good offense, apparently. That's a little unrealistic. Oklahoma, Florida. Defensively, UCF, UCLA, Florida. So UCLA's had a really good defense. I'm going to do the realignment thing also, guys. Um, I have to do that in the offseason, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to move Texas and Oklahoma. There was rumors in like the early 2010s that they were going to move Oklahoma and Texas to, to the Pac-12 anyway. And I just think it'll be more balanced as far as UCLA, Oklahoma having to play tougher teams. They'll have to play each other. Plus, you know, conference championship. Plus, it's just going to make it harder. Like UCLA probably shouldn't, with the talent level they have, make nine national championship games in like whatever it is, eight or whatever in this amount of time. So, okay, last thing, we're just going to look at uh, some of our rosters here. Just look at some of our big time players. QBs, we looked at Seneca, Phillip. 3,000 yards. I don't know if they're passing it quite as much as they used to at Florida. Um, he ran the ball a decent amount. Rexy, going to be done. Uh, good good final year for Michigan. Carson uh, didn't pass the ball at the time, but 33 touchdowns, two picks. Um, running back, Willis, 880. They just don't really run the ball a ton at Florida. Steven Jackson at AM, 960. Oh, Larry Johnson, Ohio State. He got injured, so I mean, he's done now, right? Yeah, Larry's done. Michael Turner at OU, uh, 1,400 yards as a sophomore. That's a huge year. Wide receiver, Andre, uh, 1,400 yards. So he basically got injured one year. Otherwise, he's basically the best receiver in the country. And Quan, final two years were both really good. Brandon Lloyd played at OU. They just don't really throw. Jericho Cautry at Florida, 1,299 yards. It's a big year. Lee Evans, yeah, he's had a really nice start to his career. Reggie Williams, just okay. Tight ends, Jason Witten, 677. He's had a good career, especially being at Vandy where they don't have a ton of talent around him. Kellen Winslow Jr., 493. Benjamin Watson, 265. Okay, National Signing Day. Let's take a look at where all these boys ended up. So QB, Jamarcus going to Troy. Um, okay. I mean, it's a huge pickup for them. Brady going to Pitt over Alabama and Notre Dame. We knew Chris Leak was going to Duke. Uh, and then Dennis Dixon going to Stanford. Okay. So QB is not going to the big time programs. Michael Bush going to Nebraska. Reggie Bush going to Nebraska. So they're going to have the Bush boys. <laughs> at nebraska that's huge because they use multiple running backs mjd ends up at utah state but I, I mean okay nebraska you're gonna be able to run the ball um robert meacham going to oklahoma we knew steve smith going to georgia tight end vernon going to ohio state okay ohio state that's a huge pickup greg olskin going to vautech Joe Thomas going to Ohio State. Okay. John Sullivan going to Ohio State. Those guys were all looking at Notre Dame, and they spurned them for Ohio State. So Lawrence Jackson ends up at UCLA. That's a nice pass rusher for them. Mario Williams ends up at Ohio State. Lamar Woodley. Ohio State. If they don't lose Vince Young, I don't know what was going on with that whole transfer thing. Cedric goes to Oklahoma. They are about to be putting together some teams that are going to be absolutely scary. Ernie goes to OU. Corner Antonio Cromartie goes to Georgia. Everson Michael Griffin goes to OU. Nelson Landry goes to Nebraska. 
And then Whitner goes to Georgia. But that run of players for Oklahoma or for Ohio State. Ohio State, yeah, number one class in the country. LSU, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Texas, Mizzou, Florida. Uh, if they don't lose, freaking Vince Young. The talent on that team is going to be literally insane. Okay, we're going to go to custom conferences. I'm going to move move things around a little bit here. So I put uh, Texas in the Pac-12 South, and I put Oklahoma in the Pac-12 North. Now, just to like even it up a little bit, I'm going to send Washington State to the Big Ten, Big 12, and I'm going to send Arizona State. I will send Utah. Was in Utah. Uh, just to even it up as far as teams, so the Big Ten actually has enough teams or Big Twelve. Um, but yeah, so that's gonna be the new Pac-12. UCLA, Texas in this side, Oklahoma, Cal, UW, Oregon, Stanford. So I, I, I think that's gonna make it a little better as far as conference championship games, all that stuff. Make UCLA have to really kind of you know go through some war. I like. Hey, I'm cool if UCLA keeps making it, but I, I want to make sure you know. And it kind of puts Oklahoma, like I said, at a disadvantage because that last one, if they would have played UCLA in that conference championship, it would have just been the winner makes it. You know, winner winners in, loser goes home. But because they didn't have a conference championship game, they were actually at a disadvantage. So that is what we're gonna do. Okay, last thing here, I'm gonna look at coaches before I make the next recruiting class. Barry Stan, he's been at freaking Boise State forever. Bobby staying at Michigan. Mac Brown, Louisiana, staying there. Wow, they were 12 and one last year under Mac Brown. Uh, Pete staying at Colorado. Jim Harbaugh, head coach ULM, so first year there. Woody Hayes, obviously staying at Ohio State. Lou Holtz, now the head coach at Central Michigan. Hey, Notre Dame, why don't you hire freaking Lou Holtz again? Don James, OC Western Michigan. Jimmy Johnson, officially in the hot seat at uh, Miami. Uh, I hope they don't fire him, but Chip Kelly, hot seat at Oregon. Urban, safe at Florida. Robert, hot seat. Ed Orgeron, safe at LSU. I, I kind of hope Ed puts it together there tom osborne gonna be safe at nebraska and they're going on a run i think here getting reggie and the bush boys there <laughs> joe paw safe at stanford gary patterson hot seat hawaii nick saban safe is the dc at baylor shem beckler safe for now at penn state schnellenberger safe at georgia tech kirby safe at georgia spurrier Dabo safe at uh at bama barry switzer safe at oklahoma Whittingham, uh, yes, yeah, so that's our coaches. So that's everywhere everyone is sitting. I'm um, gonna make the extra recruiting class. Recruiting class is made. This is an interesting class. Definitely some really good players. Kind of a weird, there's a lot of linebackers and defensive ends, kind of running backs and receivers. Those are kind of the main positions, but we got some good ones. Now, QB, not the best QB class for sure. We got two, we got Pat White, obviously played at West Virginia, super athletic QB, kind of before his time, small, but re can really run. He's looking at Florida, LSU, Texas, Bama. Then the other one is Chad Henney, uh, played at Michigan uh, from PA, looking at Penn State, Army, Pitt, West Virginia. Go down to running back and we got three, I, I like all three of these. First, we got Marshawn Lynch from Oakland, of course, played for the Cal Golden Bears. He's looking at Stanford, Cal, USC, Arizona State, Washington. Then we got Adrian Peterson, yeah, maybe the best running back recruit, probably since like the 80s when you had like Bo Jack and those guys. So, you know, absolute super stud. He ended up playing at Oklahoma. He's from Texas. He's looking at Florida, Ohio State, Oklahoma, UCLA. Honestly, all those schools would be cool. Um, and then the other one is Peyton Hillis. Now he's kind of a fullback running back hybrid. He did play at Arkansas. Um, he's looking at Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi State. Then we go to wide receiver and we got four and we got some good ones. First, Calvin freaking Johnson. Now he's from Georgia. He played at Georgia Tech, but he's looking at Georgia, Florida, Miami, and Tech. Then we got Ted Ginn Jr. He's from Columbus, Ohio, played at Ohio State, one of the more exciting college football players ever. Uh, also looking at Michigan, Mizzou, and uh, Kentucky. We got Early Doucette. He's from Louisiana. He went to LSU. Um, he's looking at LSU, Florida, Oklahoma, Texas A&M. And then last we have Dwayne Jarrett. He's from New Jersey. He played on those USC teams with like Reggie Bush and Liner and those guys, uh, big like 6'4", 6'3", receiver. Um, he's looking at Army, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan, and Notre Dame. 
Uh, if we go to tight ends, we got Fred Davis. Now, he actually played at USC. He's from Ohio. He played on those USC teams, but he's like an Ohio State, Michigan, Notre Dame, Nebraska. Then we have Zach Miller, really good kind of just all around tight end. He's from Phoenix, Arizona. He played at Arizona. He's looking at UCLA, Nebraska, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan. We actually have no offensive linemen in this class, which is kind of crazy. Uh, we go to defensive defensive Enzo, and we got five of them. First, Brian Arakpo played at Texas. He's from Houston, Texas. Played for the Skins in the NFL. Really good player. Crazy athlete. He's looking at Georgia, Florida, Vandy, Arkansas, LSU. We got Robert Ayers from South Carolina. He played at Tennessee. He's looking at Florida, Oklahoma, UCLA, Georgia. Uh, Harvey, he's from Maryland. He's looking at Florida, Oklahoma, UCLA, Ohio State. We have Calais Campbell. He's from, De uh, oh, I accidentally put him at Derby. He's from Denver, Colorado. He played at uh, my, the U Miami, um, but Miami's not really getting their recruits right now. He's looking at Florida, Ohio State, Mizzou. Um, and we got one more, Chris Long, you know, big time, you know, defensive end for the Rams. He played at Virginia, it was like the second overall pick in the NFL draft. He's looking at Ohio State, Florida, Oklahoma, Georgia. Okay, we go to defensive tackles. We got one, Glenn Dorsey. He was like the third or something, third-ish overall pick out of LSU. He's from Louisiana. He's looking at Georgia, Florida, Vandy, Oklahoma, Stanford. Um, Then we go to linebackers, and we got four linebackers. First, Keith Rivers. He's from Florida. He actually played on those USC teams as well. It was like a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. He's looking at Florida, Miami, Georgia, Florida State, Alabama. Then moving on to middle linebackers, we got Patrick Willis. Um, played for Ole Miss. He's from Tennessee. He's looking at Oklahoma, Ohio State, Georgia, and Florida. We got Lawrence Timmons, big time linebacker at Florida State. Super fast, athletic. He's looking at Florida, Notre Dame, UCLA, Alabama. And then we got one more new head coach of the New England Patriots played at Tennessee. He's from Virginia. He's looking at Florida, Georgia, Oklahoma, UCLA. Then we move on to corners. This is our last player. And we got Darrell Revis. Welcome to Revis Island. One of the best corners of all time. He played at Pitt. He's looking at Florida, Tennessee, Penn State, Alabama, Georgia. So that is the recruiting class, guys. Like Hall of Famers, some of the best. You don't have quarterbacks. If you don't have some like stud QBs that always kind of affects how good the class is, but overall, really nice class. Okay, so big, big year right here. Ohio State's trying to go back to back to back. Gonna look at our preseason polls here. Ohio State, two time defending national champions. We got Florida, you know, always right there. Uh, we got UCLA has made <laughs> Eight, no, seven, however many natties in the last few years. Texas looks decent. Oklahoma looks really good. Georgia looks really good. Arkansas, oh, Arkansas and Michigan look decent. Cal looks pretty good. LSU, Bama, Notre Dame look okay. Nebraska looks pretty good. Um, Army looks all right. More B pluses. USC's an A minus. Uh, a and M's an A minus. Minnesota, definitely got to keep our eye on Minnesota. One other thing, remember, also, I switched Texas and Oklahoma now to the Pac-12. So now the Pac-12 has number three, four, five in, in college football rankings right now. So that's going to make that a lot more interesting to follow along with the Pac, I think. Michael Dodd, he definitely could try to win, you know, conference pl or player of the decade. If you look at his stats, they are in Sane hasn't won a national championship, but made two. If he's going to able to win his second Heisman this year, you know, maybe win and win a Natty, he'll be right there. And then Aaron Rodgers is on the list as well. Rodgers just is never going to put up crazy stats playing in that in that um, triple option offense. I like kind of the the teams that have been killing it lately: UCLA, Florida. Uh, Oklahoma, Ohio State. I, I think those are probably the four best, but I like Nebraska. But yeah, we're going to go to week nine and then we'll see. Okay, here we are week nine. Let's go look at some of this recruiting here first. So Pat White, okay. UTEP, the Bulls are his top two right now. So kind of smaller schools. And then Henny, Buffalo, Army, Syracuse. So big QB's not going to the big time schools. Marshawn, Utah, Stanford, like his top two. Um, AP, I think AP at UCLA would be sick. 
would be sick. It'd be cool at Ohio State to him and freaking Vince Young in the backfield together. But UCLA with how much they run the ball would be sick. And Peyton Hillis is going to Arkansas. Wide out. Uh, Calvin looking like the U, Bama, or Georgia Tech. I don't even know who I'd like to see him out of those. All of them would be cool, but none of them have that really great QB that he'd be playing with. Okay. Is that Eastern Michigan? Uh, Vandy and, and Michigan for Ted Ginn. Okay. Early a and m lsu and then Dwayne jarrett army penn state okay we got some weird kind of schools for some of these guys we got fred davis looking at uh, notre dame ohio state purdue zach miller uh ucla ohio state are his top two big time like those, those would be big for either of those schools Arakpo, arkansas or bandy robert ayers georgia looks like way out in front Derek harvey going to michigan Calais Campbell, Mizzou or New Mexico. And then Chris Long looking like Ohio State, Florida. No one's really recruiting him right now. Uh, Glenn Dorsey going to Oklahoma, locked in. Uh, Keith Rivers looking like Miami or Florida. Patrick Willis, okay. Ohio State and uh, Middle Tennessee. So that would be wild if he spurred Ohio State for Middle Tennessee. Duke, UNC, and ECU for Lawrence Timmons. Gerard Mayo looking like Virginia or JMU. That's it there. And then last but not least, our corner. We got Darrell Revis, either Marshall or Tennessee. So these guys are going to weird schools, a lot of them this year. Not really going to the big guns as much as we've seen. I mean, it's still somewhat early, but a lot of them are down to like their top two. Looking here, we got UCLA still number one in the country. They're at Florida this week. That's a huge game. AM 7 0 with Eli Manning. They just beat Florida. So that's Florida's first loss. TCU, Baylor, Washington, Georgia, OU still undefeated. They don't play UCLA. They're in the other conference. So, wow. There is a ton of unbeaten teams. What a back-to-back -back for... F Look at Florida. They play Texas A&M, UCLA, and Georgia three weeks in a row. Huh, that's a pretty sick game, though. Phillip Rivers versus Rodgers. We'll check out this game. I, I think that's a really cool game. We always watch conference championships. So this is like inner league play that we're really only going to get on these weird, weird cross matches like this. So let's watch this one. We watch a lot of UCLA lately. Um, but hey, that's just how it's worked out. You're at Florida for UCLA. I don't remember seeing Ohio State. So that might have, that must have mean they've lost at least a game. So they're two time defending champs. Uh, UCLA, number one rush offense in the country, fifth in total offense, second in defense. Like UCLA, man, just destroying over there. Dodd got injured though. Uh, it would have been cool to see what his final stats would have been like. He's out eight weeks. And I don't even... Oh, and we got the weather. This definitely got to... You got to think that's going to lean um, UCLA with this weather. I don't know who their backup running back is or how good he is right now. But uh, you got to think that's going to be a little bit to UCLA's advantage. So Phillip Rivers versus Rodgers right now. I'm just going to go through the first quarter and we'll see where we're at. Florida goes down and scores. UCLA got stopped, but then UCLA scores and they have the ball and score again right before the end of the quarter. So 14-7, uh, Florida ball now, 15, second and five, first and 10, second and 12, third and eight here for Phillip Rivers. Big down right here. Phillip's got to try to get this done. Um Gonna be motioning his tight end across. He doesn't have the weapons like this year as much. He's got Devin Hester as his big time guy. Gonna check it down there on the screen. But he's going down. Okay, let's go next change of possession. Right here, so 14-7. UCLA drives and scores. They're up 21-7. Second and 10. Third and 13 here for Florida. Um, trips to the top of the screen here. And drop back. They're trying another screen pass on third down. That had absolutely no shot. Wow. Okay. Tried it for Hester. I mean, UCLA could go down and absolutely put... A-Rod. Pick six for Florida. Okay. They're right back in it. UCLA third and 10. Fourth and 10. Going to go back to Florida here. First and 10. First and 10. First and 10. Three big passes in a row. 
First and goal. They hit four, like 15 yard plus. Okay, but it's 28 seconds. Florida's got one timeout down to the one yard line, trying to tie this right before the half. It is a torrential downpour. Phillip Rivers in back in the pocket, standing tall. Fires it picked off. That's a pick six going the other way. Oh my goodness, UCLA. Oh no, Rivers, you had all day to throw and the linebacker steps in front and goes like 103 yards for the pick six. Wow, and now it's back. Well, that's a 14 point swing right there. Crazy. Who's Yeah, okay, fourth and five. So both teams, oh my God, fumbled. UCLA recovers third and eight here. UCLA can go up 21 oh my goodness okay a rod drops back sliding feels in the pocket delivers that that's gonna be just short of the first down but even if they kick the field goal they're gonna go up three scores florida is getting dusted on their home field that play before the half was so massive third and three first and ten second and 18 third and eight my god a rod 179 three touchdowns he also threw a pick six they're kind of even there so even if you take those out like it's still a three score game uh rivers drops out and they're trying these freaking why are they doing these screen passes on third and long like I, I don't get it field goal good um yeah so it's a 13 point lead now incomplete five yards incomplete and they punt it to ucla you do not want ucla oh fourth and seven okay Rush for 23, Newman, and a Devin Hester 36-yard touchdown. We got a six-point game with five minutes left. And we got a third and two right here for UCLA. But this is where they want to be, up six in the fourth quarter, where they can run it, you know, use their wishbone offense. They're going to get this guy. Oh, Florida comes up, gets a great play, huge stick. The UCLA running back goes down and the Gators are alive. Four minutes left. Phillip Rivers throw away. Two yard rush. Fourth and eight. Oh my gosh. 15 yard penalty against the defense somehow. Uh, second and 13. First and 10. First and 10. Second and three from the nine. So we're going to watch from here. Even if they score, kick your extra point, you're up one giving A-Rod the ball. Uh, not where you want to be, but hey, you can take the lead with two minutes left. Oh, he's got a room to the outside. He picks up the first down just barely. I'm going to sim one more. Okay, there's a touchdown. So extra point is good. Florida has a one point lead. Eight yard rush. Gould for 18. Oh, Miller for 29. And UCLA is pretty much in field goal range already so that's what i said like if you're florida they're running triple option with a rod no fumbles there if you're rogers and you're ucla um that's really where you know you just don't want to be up one point with rogers we have third and ten here with a minute left florida does have three i would be using a timeout right here they really should have um you still get the ball back with a minute but i mean okay ucla doesn't even let the clock run down rogers oh, Oh, it hit homie in the hands. That was a strike down the seam by Rodgers, and they're going for it. They don't like their odds of a field goal, I guess. They say, our kicker's not that great. Oh, my God. Okay, here's the game. I thought they could easily kick a field goal from here. And a sack. Rodgers goes down. UCLA does have three timeouts. Now they need a stop. Yeah, there. Oh, that right in the dude's hands. First and 10, Phillip Rivers knees. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Florida, a crazy comeback to beat UCLA. Oh my goodness, by a point. Rodgers down the seam in the dude's hands. He drops it in the rain and then he, there, there it was right there. And I guess they're, they just didn't think their kicker could. That was only like a, not, I don't even think that was a 40 yard kick. They just really must not have had confidence in their kicker in the rain. Um, Rivers 376 and three scores. Other than that pick six at the end, he played really well. I feel like Hester had a huge day. 10 for 157 and two touchdowns. Uh, this Miller had a wicked day for UCLA. They were like running the ball well, but no one, not one guy really had a crazy day. And then A-Rod, I mean, he threw a pick six as well. 
11 completion. He's averaging 22 yards per completion. He should have had his fourth touchdown on that seam ball, but there it is a one point game. Now Florida has still has to play Georgia next week. UCLA is still going to be alive. They have one loss. I'm assuming they're going to play Oklahoma in the conference championship game. And the winner of that will probably have a good chance of making the natty. Um, Eli and Phillip, the two leading passers in the in football with my QB in the middle there. Uh, Clayton and Williams, the two leading receivers, tackles Thomas Davis. There's sacks and there's interceptions. Um, yes. Okay. Now we're going to sim to conference championship weekend and we'll see where we're at. Okay. So conference championship weekend. Let's see where we are at. So, oh, you still undefeated. They're playing UCLA. A&M with Eli Manning is undefeated. And then we got Baylor and Army. So Baylor has no conference championship game. Army has to play North Texas. UCLA. Oh my. I, I, I can't believe this run UCLA is on. If they win though, they probably still won't make it because of this Baylor team. These are crazy games. Though. We're just going to sim them and we'll go to the natty. Um, I'm a little worried one of these teams is going to lose and then we're going to get Baylor or Army. Let's sim this Army game first. Um, and hopefully North Texas wins. No, they got killed. Okay, let's go Georgia and AM. I I'm I'm hoping AM. I'd like to see Eli and Georgia wins an OT, so we might be getting Baylor. If 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 Oklahoma loses, we're probably getting Army versus Baylor. Oh, we also have Ohio State, Nebraska, which is just a sick game. Natty really not on the line, so Ohio State's not gonna three peep, but let's see this one. Ohio State wins by one over Nebraska to win the conference again. Okay, I'm just going to sim this game. This is what I wanted, though, basically. I wanted UCLA to have more competition. I wanted OU to have a chance in these conference championship games. So let's see what happens. Oklahoma by three in overtime. Oh, my. Wow, what a game. Okay, so we're going to sim to Oklahoma. It should be Oklahoma Baylor. Maybe Oklahoma Army will, will be the game. Eli wins the Heisman. 50 total touchdowns his senior year. A-Rod gets fourth, but there it is. Wow. Eli. Crazy. But he doesn't make the natty. He could have made the natty this year for sure. Um, yeah, it's Baylor, Oklahoma. So Baylor gets in. Playing OU. 12 and over 13 0. So Oklahoma has a chance to win their fourth natty of the sim. They've been a little more low key though. They like, they don't really make natties and lose. Like, have they made one and actually lost? So, okay, they made one in 99 loss. So that's one appearance. They made one in 97 and one. They made one in 92 and one. They made the first one in 1980 and one. Okay, but I think they, I think we're missing one. Well, maybe they only have two right now. Oh, and they made it in 99 and lost. Okay, I don't know. I I just have it in my notes. I have my like sheet written up, but uh, yeah. So here it is. Oklahoma, 37 points per game. They, they are like the two best defenses in the country. So, I mean, yeah, this is uh, this is a game. They have Frank Gore and Michael Turner as their two running backs. Lofa Tutupu. Oh, you trying to get it done when at least their third, maybe their fourth at Addy. We'll have to check at the end of the year. Hard when we get this far in to remember exactly who's won how many, but um, Ohio State and AM both have four. I'm pretty sure this would be three or I want to say four though for, for OU. Actually, I think this would be Baylor's second or at least made two. Maybe not. Oh, yeah, they made it in 2000. So this is their four, second appearance in four years. Okay, let's, let's sim through this one. Our first quarter, Baylor goes up 3-0. OU answers, goes up 7-3. Then OU up 10-3. Um, Baylor trying to drive here, second and four, first and 10. Wow, a couple of huge pass plays, second and 10, third and 10 here at the start of that quarter. Baylor trying to go down and tie this on OU. OU obviously needs a big stop here. They're going to run draw, which I just hate. I hate, hate, hate when people run draw on those third and longs. I think that's Cameron Wimbley, 10-6, uh, OU football. They have a lot of playmakers on offense. Mercedes Lewis, Frank, or Michael Turner. They just got, I think, Robert Meacham at wide receiver. Uh, they got kind of a split back look here. 
QB going to drop back. They're going to running back screen. I think that's Frank Gore, and he's going to be tackled short. Oh, Baylor comes up with the stop. Okay, punting it off. Baylor, first and 10, hitting a couple of big passes there. Second and 15, third and 11 here for the Bears. See what they can do. 10-6, empty trips to the field here. Drop back, a little pump fake going up over the top. Oh, that's a... Wow! He laid that in there. The receiver got both feet down. That was insane. And then they score a touchdown next play. Baylor has the lead right before the half here. Let's see if OU can drive down and tie it up. They're really trying to run the ball there. Kind of stalled out. Um, let's see if they can freaking pick it up on third and nine. This is not where Baylor necessarily wants to be. They're built to run the ball. Uh, QB pressure. Oh my God. They're calling that as a fumble. Oh no. Oh no. Oklahoma. Oh, you um, shitting down their leg here. Third and 20 for them. Luckily for them, they get it to third and 20. If they let, if they let Baylor convert this though, um, I don't know. Kind of a comedy of errors there for Oklahoma and he tries the exact same throw so I don't know what these QBs are up to uh, pressure might be getting to him a little bit on those third downs or they think they got to be Superman they're gonna punt it off we'll see third and five fourth and five okay I'm just gonna go to the end of half here oh Baylor kicks a field goal right before the half Oklahoma gets the ball to start first and ten second and five third and four and they get stopped they are having trouble with this Baylor defense Third and eight here for Baylor, up six points. Oklahoma has some studs on defense. Wimbley, Totupu, they're bringing a blitz. They get the screen out, but the defensive line comes over. Then the safeties and, and linebackers come in and fill. That's a good job by the OU defense. Two of the best defenses in the country this year. Third and six. Okay, they got a defensive penalty, 10 yards. Third and 10. Wow. And ba Baylor seems to be like not being incredible on offense, but better than Oklahoma's fourth and inches. And they punt it that they get Baylor gets stopped. OU has a ball interception. Baylor first and 10, second and three, third and three here for Baylor with four seconds left. Even if they get a field goal, they're up two scores and OU's offense has just been stymied. They're going to do hand it off and there's a huge tackle up front by the D-line. Going to keep it to a nine point game going into the fourth quarter. Field goal, no good. He misses a 29 yard chip shot, Oklahoma. If you have a drive in you, you need it right here. They're running the ball, not getting a lot. Third and seven here for Oklahoma. Out of field goal range. Like I said, if you're Oklahoma, this is now or never. Okay, drops back. Out route. Fourth and inches. You got to go for this. Fourth and inches. They're going for it. We'll watch us. Oh my, six minutes left in the national championship. Under center, I form here. Going to hand it off to Michael Turner. Gets around the corner. It looked like that cornerback was maybe going to be able to get up there and stuff him. But Michael Turner turns the corner. Third and five, fourth and four. They're going for this on fourth and four. 530 left. I don't, I wouldn't hate a field goal there. You know, get it to a three point game. Your defense has played good, but. Here it is, fourth and four. No pressure right into the middle. And the linebacker comes up and makes a great play to knock that ball out. And the Baylor Bears are 5-15 away from winning the national championship. We got third and eight here for the Bears. Oh my goodness, it is go time. Oh, you, you need a stop here. 450. They're going to run draw and yeah, oh, you collapses. These draws on these third and like, they're not even that long. Third and eight. That's not third and 20, not th th third and 18. Like you can, you can try to throw there. Yeah, fumble recover. Uh, their punt returner fumbled. I don't even know. A fumble, Ernie Sims for a touchdown. And now OU's up seven or one. Baylor for 27. Eight yard run, six yard run, second and four, third and three. They're in field goal range. They could go up two if they don't convert here, but they did miss a 29 yard field goal uh, like two drives ago. So this is not a chip shot. Oh, they're running speed option. Wow, that's a great job to flick it off. The guy breaks a tackle. Oh my goodness. What a play by Baylor. 
Okay, two yard run. First and goal from the one and they score. It is, and they get a two point conversion. Wow, okay, so now it's back to a seven point lead for Baylor. Robert Meacham for 13, eight, fourth and two. Here is basically the ball game. Oklahoma, game on the line. They're going to their wishbone. Trip speed option, he's going down. Wow, Baylor Bears. OU does have three timeouts, but four yard run, nine yard run. Yeah, it is over. Fourth and three. They miss another field goal. With 40 seconds left, OU has a shot. They go for 24. Pass dropped. Third and 10. One yard penalty. Second and 10. 10 seconds left. So they need, they have no timeouts. They basically need a 25 yard gain right here. Get to the ball, spike it, and kick a. Oh no, they need a touchdown. Go deep. He's got man kind of. Oh, should have been picked. Okay, yeah. So that's now they're kind of Hail Mary mode. I was like, oh, they don't need a field goal. But yeah, this is basically over here. Baylor versus OU. Baylor right here. Game last play. And he's going down. And the Baylor Bears win the national championship in 2004. One of our only really kind of small school teams to win it. Baylor in 04. Army in 01. Memphis in 1996. Other than that, yeah, those are kind of the small schools who have won three of them. You can maybe say University of Washington, but they're not really a small, a small school. They've won an Addy in real life. So, yeah, it's really only been three times. And OU goes down. Oliver, 366. They have like none of our guys. Like they have no real life players. Turner played well. Their QB is just not great. Meacham, as a freshman, played pretty good, but. There it is. Baylor knocks off Oklahoma, one of our blue bloods. Okay, so here we are at the end of the year. Baylor undefeated. 13-0, Georgia, Oklahoma, TCU, Ohio State, A&M. Where'd Florida finish? Three losses to end the year. Heisman, we saw Eli won it. So that's his, that's going to be it for Eli. Heisman won a bunch of awards this year. Hmm, three pretty good years, especially his last two. He was really good for A&M. Uh, Rogers gets fourth, which we knew. All-Americans. Eli Clayton, he's had a really good career. 1,600 yards this year. Yeah, he's been just the only receiver for Eli. So, just been getting force-fed the ball. Gallery, uh, Marcus Spears at Ohio State. Lofa Tutupu at uh, Oklahoma. Cedric Benson as a returner for Ohio State. Vince Young, second team. Okay. Okay, Vince Young. 4,000 yards, 43 touchdowns, 11 picks as a redshirt freshman. 790. Oh, my gosh. That's insane. If he stays all four years and doesn't get injured, the stats he's going to have. Michael Turner was great this year. Um, okay, like we're, we're, we could be seeing something. I, I'm kind of upset I accidentally made him 6'7 when he's supposed to be 6'4, obviously. But Thomas Davis, big year this year. Okay, Vince Young. To do that as a freshman? That's crazy. That is crazy. Okay. We're about to look at the freshman team. I'm so freaking flabbergasted. Reggie Bush gets it for Nebraska 934 as a backup. Yeah, Reggie's going to do some shit. Uh, 1,100 yards for Steve Smith. Okay, Vernon Davis at Ohio State. 700 yards as a freshman. What is happening? Look at their freshman class for Ohio State on offense. Frickin' Joe Thomas, Vernon Davis, and Vince Young. And John Sullivan. Crazy. And Mario Williams. Like, yeah, their freshman class last year was freaking insane. Tony Cromartie for Georgia. Um, yeah, so that that's what I, I'm like. I, I can't believe Vince Young right now. We might see something. See, see, he was third in the country in passing. Wow, 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 wow. Clayton. Uh, tackles, Thomas Davis led the country, sacks, and then interceptions. Team stats really quick. Uh, Western Kentucky, UCLA, AM, Ohio State, TCU. Defense, Baylor, number one defense by far. That's how they won their, won their chip. Um, 
really really good on defense okay we're gonna quickly look at some of our other top players so philip he's gonna be maybe back for one more year he hasn't quite put up the stats i was maybe thinking he would in this offense but he's still been really good floor uh we looked at raw oh ben big ben decent career nothing insane joe mauer good year this year definitely a good year this year um running back cadillac uh 811 okay so i don't know if they changed their offense or what uh, Michael Turner had a great year and he should be back. Um, yeah, I mean, Steven Jackson, oh, 655. Okay, Steven Jackson was really good, just like all around back. There's Cedric. Um, Frank Gore going to be taking over. Oh, no, I think, yeah, Turner's actually back. So they got Turner and, o and Gore next year again. Uh, Vincent Jackson, 1,300 yards for Fresno State. Um, Roddy White. 967 clayton we already seen tight end Callum winslow we already looked at benjamin watson 349 uh dn's jared allen he's wrapping up his career 22 sacks demarcus ware ooh, a bit a bit of a bit further down but still a decent year right end sean merriman also at florida three sacks this year he tackle darnell dockett his stats, Haloti Nada. Has he been at BYU? Four and a half sacks as an interior lineman's really good. DJ Williams, he's going to be gone at Florida. Nice career. Middle, Carlos Dansby, he's going to be gone at Florida as well. Lofa, Derek Johnson at Arkansas. Right outside, Thomas Davis going to be back at Florida after winning the Buckus this year. Cornerback, Brant McFadden at Florida. So Florida's losing a ton on defense. Adam Jones. Jones will probably be the best corner in the country next year. Free safety, Sean Taylor. Wow, Florida's losing a ton. A absolute ton on defense. My goodness. Crazy. Okay, so now we are going to sim to uh, National Signing Day, and then we're going to go look at our coaches. And then this is also the second last season of this video. Okay, National Signing Day. Okay, so Pat White going to the Bull, and then Chad Henney going to Army. Uh, Marsh on Arizona State. Okay, AP, this is big. AP going to Ohio State. Vince Young and Adrian Peterson. Peyton Hillis going to Arkansas. Uh, Calvin going to Bama. Ted Ginn. Early Doucette, AM. Dwayne Jarrett going to Penn State. Fred da Davis going to Cincinnati. Zach Miller going to Ohio State. So they're going to have Zach Miller and Vernon Davis uh, at tight end. Like, wow. Uh, Brian Arakpo, Arkansas. Uh, Harry Harvey. Clayus Campbell, uh, Clayus Campbell going to Mizzou. Chris Long, JMU. D tackle, Glenn Dorsey going to Oklahoma. Keith Rivers going to Florida. Uh, Patrick Willis going to uh, Middle Tennessee, <laughs> Lawrence Simmons, Duke, Gerard Mayo, Virginia, cornerback Darrell Revis, Tennessee, and that is it. That is the class. Look at top classes. We have UCLA, first in the country, Army, okay, Ohio State, Nebraska, and Texas, USC, Oklahoma. Okay, now we're just going to go to uh, the start of the 2005 season i can't believe we're at 2005 guys i remember being at 1980 being like this is a huge undertaking and to be in 2005 is kind of wild but yeah we're gonna look at the coaches right now so barry alvarez gets fired at boise state he's gonna be at uh usc bobby bowden still at michigan uh mac brown still with the raging cajuns pete carroll safe for now at colorado harbaugh new head coach at mississippi state so let's see if Harbaugh, he has a career record of 37 and 73. Not good. Woody Hayes, obviously safe. Lou Holtz, Central Michigan. Don James, Western Michigan. Jimmy Johnson got fired from the U. Our career record of 257 and 79. Um, 22 winning seasons. Eight conference championships. Won a national championship. I cannot believe he got fired. So we have very few coaches that are still, still with their original team. Chip Kelly got fired from Oregon. Urban still at uh, Florida. Nealon safer now at Tennessee. Ed Orgeron low at LSU. I hope he can pick it up. Tom Osborne safe at Nebraska. Joe Paw on the hot seat. Uh, Gary Patterson safe 
at uh, Hawaii. Okay, Nick Saban getting another run. He's going to be at Wisconsin now. So hopefully he can pull it together. Bo Schembechler, Penn State. Howard Schnellenberger, Georgia Tech is safe. Kirby safe at Georgia. Spurrier's basically... Okay, Dabble on the kind of hot seat once again. Very safe. How many? I want to look at his natties. I think he's won three, right? Yeah, yeah, he's won three. So he's trying to win his fourth. Um, Kyle Whittingham back at Utah. Okay, your second go around at Utah for Whittingham. Who's the best recruiter right now? The head coach. Okay, Woody Hayes. So we have a few guys at. Okay, Schembechler. Where's uh, Urban? I thought would have been right there. Also, I just want to see Natty. So who has, so yeah, Woody has four, Barry has three, Lou has two, Urban has two. This, uh, the Drew Thatcher guys are really good for UCLA. Uh, yeah, so that's where we're at. Alrighty, so gonna make the next recruiting class and we'll get right into it. All right, guys, so 2005 season, just made the recruiting class. Let's get into it. It's an interesting class, um, very running back, linebacker heavy, I would say. Very cool, you know, group of running backs, definitely a lot of talent there. Um, I would say that's that running linebacker, yeah, are definitely the two spots that are kind of the, the deepest. So, but once again, lots of good players kind of throughout. So first at QB, we kind of have one, Mark Sanchez, I would say, is the you know big time target. Obviously, went to USC. He took over after Matt Leinert. He's looking at UCLA, Cal, USC. Kind of looks like he's gonna stay in the area. I kind of hope he doesn't go to UCLA just because they don't throw the ball. They're playing triple option. He doesn't really fit their system. Then we got Colt McCoy, who obviously was the Texas quarterback after Vince Young. He's uh, looking at Texas, Oklahoma, A and M. And then we have Chase Daniels, who played at Mizzou, played forever in the NFL. He's also from Texas. He's looking for Texas, Texas A and M, TCU. We go to running back. This is a big position here. We have six of them. So we first have Darren McFadden from Arkansas, played at Arkansas. He's looking at Texas, Oklahoma, Alabama, was unbelievable in college. Uh, then we have Jamal Charles from Texas, played at Texas. Uh, he's looking at Oklahoma, UCLA. I would love for him to go to UCLA. I think he'd be a great fit there. Also, Washington, USC in the mix. We have Rashard Mendenhall from Illinois. He's looking at Florida, Army, Nebraska, Washington, Ohio State. We have Ray Rice looking at Army, Syracuse, Penn State, Pitt. We have Jonathan Stewart looking at UCLA, Oklahoma, Nebraska. Any of those three would be cool. Also, USC, Georgia. And is that six? One, two, three, four, five. No, we're missing. Oh, yeah, we're missing right here. Steve Slayton. Now, Slayton went, played at West Virginia. Really good college player. Played in the NFL with like the Texans and stuff as well. Fast, um, good receiver. He's looking at Oklahoma, Nebraska, UCLA. All the running backs are really, like, most of them are looking at those three, which, I mean, is all good because, you know, they're going to run the ball a ton, so it'd be cool to see them go there. Okay, receiver. We have one that stands above the rest, Deshaun Jackson, Oklahoma, UCLA, Florida, Ohio State, Nebraska. Now, three of those are the biggest running teams in the sim, and the other are Florida, Ohio State. So I'm really hoping he goes to Florida or Ohio State out of those five. Then we have Mario Manningham looking at Arizona State, Texas, USC. And we have Darius Hayward Bay, top 10, 15 pick by the Raiders. Super fast, went to Maryland. He's looking at Oklahoma, UCLA, Florida, USC, Ohio State. We look at uh, tight ends. We got one. It is Jermichael Finley. Played at Texas. Played with the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers in the NFL. Um, he played for Texas. Like I said, he's looking at a and Texas A&M. Or sorry, Texas, Texas A&M, Oklahoma, Arkansas. Offensive lineman, we have two. Yeah, we got first Michael Orr. He's looking at Tennessee, Vandy, uh, Colorado, Oklahoma. Then we got Eugene Monroe. He's looking at Army, Penn State, and Rutgers from uh, New Jersey. We have no centers or guards. Move on to defensive ends. We actually have no defensive ends either, but we do have a D tackle in the Dama Kong Su. This is an absolute beast. Like, I can't believe how far we've came, guys. We we had freaking, you know, we had 
Jerome Brown in the 80s and now we're all the way to Ndamukong Su. So we've been on quite a journey so far, but Ndamukong, he's from Portland, Oregon. He played at Nebraska. He's looking at Ohio State, Oklahoma, UCLA, Florida. Outside linebackers, we got one. We got James Laranitis. He's from Minnesota. He played at Ohio State. He's looking at UCLA, Oklahoma, Georgia, A&M. Then moving on to middles, we got three. We got Ray Maluga, played at USC huge like 6'2 250 pounds he's looking at ucla usc cal stanford so it looks like he'll stay in that area we have brian cushing who also played for usc but he's from new jersey he's looking at ucla usc texas oklahoma and the last one is curtis lofton who played at oklahoma he's from the state of oklahoma he's looking at ucla cal oklahoma uh texas then we go to cornerback. We got one, Walter Thurmond. He played for the Seahawks in the NFL. He played at Oregon. He's from California. He's looking at UCLA, USC, Oklahoma, Cal. Then we have two safeties. We got a free safety in Malcolm Jenkins. You know, really good player at Ohio State. Played for the Saints, Eagles in the NFL. You know, pro bowler, all pro type player. He's looking at Penn State, Georgia, Vandy, Auburn, Bama. Then we have Kenny Phillips, who played at the University of Miami. Uh, really good college player, played in the NFL once again. Looking at Florida, Georgia, Oklahoma, and the U. So that is the class, guys. Definitely a cool class. And this will be the last season of this episode, video number four out of seven parts of this series. So we're just going to advance to uh, the start of 05. Okay, 05. Let's look at the preseason polls. So first, Georgia at a, at a minus. I don't really see why they're number one. Um, Baylor beat Oklahoma last year. Oklahoma A plus basically across the board except, except special teams. Ohio State, really good offense this year. Kind of similar for Nebraska. Florida, A-plus across the board. A&M, A-minus, but they lost uh, Eli Manning. Uh, UCLA, a 97 overall. Army's good. Baylor's pretty good. Cal's pretty good. Notre Dame's all right. Minnesota's not bad. USC's all right. Ooh, we don't have a lot of A's this year. Okay, Penn State's an A-plus. Okay, so look out for them. Georgia Tech looks decent um yeah so honestly not as much like a teams like really it's you know like the a pluses we got one two three four five kind of the five schools that have been kind of really really doing well the last few years we'll look at the highs and watch we got vince young leading the way for ohio state he had such a good freshman year we have philip rivers his fourth year starting for florida never made a national championship so uh we have aaron Rodgers starting his third straight year for ucla uh been really good both years uh we have this anthony parker and then finish it off with michael turner with 1700 yards rushing for oklahoma last year so yeah we are going to sim till week nine and we'll see where we're at all right, so here we are in week nine. Let's go through this recruiting. So QB looking like, San oh man, I, I really hope he doesn't go to UCLA. I'm cool with UCLA being good, but they don't use the QB enough. I, I mean, it'd be good for them to go Aaron Liner Sanchez. Uh, Colt McCoy going to Texas. That's big for Texas. They need that QB. I like it. And uh, Chase Daniels at North Texas, he's going to. So that is where we're sitting there. For running back, Darren McFadden, Cal or Bama. All right, we'll see. Jamal Charles, Oklahoma, Tulsa, maybe you dub. Go to Oklahoma. That'd be cool. Uh, Mendenhall, Army. Oh, my God. Army is just, okay. Maybe Army is going to be the next powerhouse. Jonathan Stewart going to UCLA. That is exactly what they needed, and they get it done. And then our last one, Steve Slayton, looking like he's going to go to the Marshall Thunder and Herd. Okay, wide receiver Deshaun. No, no. They've got so many sick receivers. They had Randy Moss, Steve Smith, Dion Branch, now him. Oh, that good for Nebraska. You just don't throw the ball. Like, play him at running back, if anything. But they're going to have him and Reggie Bush. Oh, my gosh. They just don't throw the ball. Manningham looking like Texas or Florida. Uh, Darius Hayward Bay, Ohio. Okay, I kind of hope he goes to Ohio State. They desperately need a wide receiver. You pair him with Vince Young, Adrian Peterson, Vernon Davis, Zach Miller. That is scary. Tight end, Jermichael Finley looking like AM. Uh, tackles, Michael Orr, Vandy, Colorado, uh, Eugene Monroe, Army or Marshall. 
D tackle Ndamukong Sue looking like Florida or UCLA. We haven't really seen Florida get many of our guys, so that would obviously be big. Laurinaitis, UCLA or Ohio State. Middle linebacker, Ray Maluga, UCLA, USC, Cal. Uh, Brian Cushing, Temple or Syracuse. And Curtis Lofton, Cal or Kansas State. Uh, corner, Walter Thurmond going to Oklahoma, Cal, UCLA. Free safety, Malcolm Jenkins, Georgia or JMU. And Kenny Phillips, Georgia, Illinois, Bama. Okay, so that is kind of where our guys are looking. Okay, look at the top 25 here. Georgia undefeated, Florida undefeated, and they play each other this week. Nebraska undefeated. They have Michigan, Minnesota, Army's undefeated, and they play nobody. We might have to move them to a tougher conference. They don't even play one ranked team, and they're in the top five. Purdue undefeated, uh, Cal, UCLA has a loss. Oklahoma, three and two. So playing in the pack's been tough. They lost to UCLA week one. Penn State, Michigan, AM has two losses. Florida State. Rivers leading the way for the Heisman. Did I miss Ohio State? Or, or like, did I just skip over them? Where's Ohio State? That just hopped into my brain. Ohio State's unranked. What? Holy, what is their record? Ohio State's four and three right now. Oh my goodness. With that talent level, that's insane. Uh, season stats, Phillip Rivers by far leading the country in passing. Not even close. Reggie Bush, fourth in the country in rushing. Devin Hester blowing the doors off everybody receiving. Uh, there's tackles, there's sacks, there's interceptions. Just quickly, we'll look at team stats. We'll see if anybody's having a crazy year offensively. Florida could be Penn State, Baylor, Minnesota. So Minnesota is scoring points ladies and gentlemen baylor has been incredible defensively the last few years they're undefeated once again so we maybe will see back-to-back -back baylor natties it's a possibility okay conference championship weekend let's look at top 25 florida staying undefeated oh god same with north texas and baylor okay ucla one loss oklahoma two losses minnesota got a loss who'd they lose to uh michigan and they play michigan again oklahoma wow okay so florida beats arkansas they're in probably against north texas which obviously is not a great game um but yeah, this we're got, starting to get a little bit worse matchups in the Natty right now. I'm kind of hoping Florida wins just because otherwise it's going to be North Texas Baylor. So Florida kind of chokes in these big games. They do win, though. OK, so Florida's basically in against North Texas unless North Texas loses right here to Tulsa. They do. So that's probably going to be Baylor in for the second year in a row. Unless they UCLA wins this game and they like them more than Baylor. But UCLA does win. Minnesota also just has one lot. So let's see if they can beat Michigan. They do. They kick Michigan's butt. Miami, Florida State. That doesn't really matter. So it's probably going to be Baylor versus Florida. Baylor did win it last year. We'll we'll see. Unless they like one of Minnesota or UCLA, just like their totality of their record over Baylor's undefeated. I doubt it though. Um, okay, we're just gonna advance week here and we'll see what our matchup is. This will be Florida trying to win their third under Urban. They've been very consistent near the top. I did think this was kind of their year as far as they're not going to be quite as good after this year. And Phillip does win the Heisman. 51 total touchdowns. Uh, yeah, this definitely felt like the year Florida is going to win over the next two, three years. This was the year they were going to do it. Um, and Ohio State was just nowhere to be found. At Ohio State even finished in the top 25. Wow. Ohio State. I don't even know what to say, guys. Yeah, so it's going to be Baylor, Florida. I, I would like to see UCLA or even Minnesota in. Who do they? Oh, they play each other in the Rose Bowl. That's actually a really cool Rose Bowl game. But we are going to watch the national championship. Yeah, Baylor trying to win their second. Florida trying to win their third. Um, yeah, let's see what happens. Baylor trying to go back to back. Baylor Bears. Florida last won, last made it in 1999 when they beat Oklahoma. They have the third best offense, seventh best defense. And oh, Baylor first and or second and first. So Baylor, they just don't play a very tough schedule in the Big 12 right now. 
I did take Texas and Oklahoma out so they're getting easier games, but I was trying to make it so UCLA, did, UCLA didn't have an easy path. I might move, move Army to the Big 12 uh, just to give them a little bit more competition and so ba Army doesn't kind of just roll through their schedule. If De Devin Hester goes, he probably won't, but if he goes for 270 yards, say he'll finish with 2,000 on the year. Um, wow. Devin Hester and Philip Rivers have been a duo. They have Sean Merriman and Demarcus Ware rushing off the edge. So, I mean, Florida's got to be the huge favorite here, but Baylor literally won it last year. They go up 7-0. Florida goes and ties it. Baylor's driving here. I'm going to go. I'm just going to go to halftime, and then we'll start jumping in. 14-7, 21-7, and they get a stop, and they stop Florida. It is 21-7 at the half for Baylor. Florida trying to drive here third and one first and ten second and three first and ten second and nine third and one florida needs to convert here you need a touchdown devin hester at the top of your screen philip rivers and shotgun they really just have they don't have a ton of talent on offense they have philip rivers and devin hester i don't know why they're letting it run down so much here let's just snap this ball let's get going gonna hit fake go underneath to their tight end oh oh and he freaking stiff arms a guy to a different universe brothers gets in florida gets cuts it down to a score let's see what the bears can do on offense now fumble recovered by florida and florida's driving to go try to tie this second and 13 third and a even if you get a field goal it's basically a three three points here they're going empty with Philip Rivers in shotgun. I have a feeling this could be the last we see of Florida for a while. So they need to get this done. Fires it over the middle. That is a completion. Keep going. Philip Rivers to Devin Hester for 13, five yards, and they score. And Florida ties it up. Baylor needs to get going on offense here and answer back. Second and 13, third and 19. Now you're letting Sean Merriman and Demarcus Ware pin their ears back you're going empty that's scary I, I i don't know if i do that they got trying to screen snuffed out no shot there i think that was demarcus ware who tracked that down and uh yeah going back to florida here philip woods for 29 run second and two first and 10 second and 10 touchdown to woods and florida Scores 21 straight. They get Baylor to third and four here. Kevin Oliver's played good. 241 and three touchdowns, but they need a conversion here. They need to stop the bleeding. Florida almost scored at the end of the half as well. They get a crazy A-gap product throw. Oh my. They had an A-gap looping pressure in his face. He stood in there and delivered the post over the middle oh my goodness what a play and then baylor scores that was an incredible throw florida needs to answer devin hester for 25 first and goal from the four after hitting hester for 29 this is a game ladies and gentlemen rivers oh, oh doing that rollout i hate when they do that oh that was such a bad play call loses eight on the play we're gonna sim one play eight yard rush third and goal from the four let's see what florida's got that's hester soloed at the top you got trips to the bottom drops back hester's on that there why are they doing these rolls fires underneath that's gonna be a touchdown florida gators urban trying to win his third ring at florida baylor 437 trying to go back to back never would have guessed it third and two third and 22 oh not quite the game but uh yeah i mean it's still four minutes left you have all your timeouts pressure oh my god they just converted third and 22 this oliver guy is nasty i like him wow pat incomplete third and seven first and ten second and nine third and four fourth and 14. are they gonna go for this they're gonna punt it okay so just out of field goal range oh wow to convert that third and 22 and get no points out of that drive that is tough you're gonna punt it out 
the back of the end zone, I think, as well. That's only about a 20-yard gain, a field position. Yeah, 12-yard run, 7-yard run. Phillips sacked, and we have third and nine, 158. Baylor still has two timeouts, so you get a stop here. It is all in front of you, Baylor Bears. Philip, the, this is how... You, oh, no, the draw. Oh, they're going to pick it up. Fourth and inches. Inches. And Florida's going to punt. They downed him at the 11, Baylor. Dropped eight yard gain, seven yards. This is going to be need to be like a 91 yard rush or uh, drive. Pick it up. Second and 10. First and 10. 45. Oh, look at the yards. This is as close as a game can get. In, in yards, you know, obviously Baylor can tie it right here. Oh, they're doing the stupid wind the clock down thing. You have 30 seconds, guys. Oh, the clock management in this older game. It, it annoys the shit out of me. Here we go, though. You're, you're letting this wind way too far. Okay, Baylor drops back. He's going to tuck it and run right into DeMarcus Ware. Oh, and you got 15 seconds. Oh, that was Sean Merriman. 13, why are you not using your timeout? Oh, Baylor just botched this. Are they going to try to spike it? You have a timeout. Oh, my God. The clock management in this game. So they're down to their last play. Um, I mean, maybe they get two plays if you hit it for 10 yards. Call a timeout with one second left. Trips to the bottom. They need a miracle right here. Oliver drops back. He's going to the end zone. Oh, my gosh. He almost, I, I don't know what just happened there, but there it is. Florida gets it done. Beats Baylor in the national championship. That is Urban's third win. Philip, this was a great play. Throw it to Brothers and look at this stiff arm. Get off me. Drives the guy into the turf and Florida gets it done urban meyer him and woody hayes have been the two best coaches in the sim to me uh most consistent barry's been good uh you know lou holtz was really good at the start jimmy was good at miami but these two you know been just very very good oliver was great today four touchdowns 378 uh their running back was good you know really just moving the ball everywhere Devin Hester five for 103 so he's gonna be at like over 1800 yards receiving in his junior year Newman was incredible for them this is Philip Rivers last game he was a four-year starter for Florida won a Heisman he had really good stats we might have to throw him I haven't been really keeping track of my players as good once again guys help me down below let me know who you guys should think should be the players of the decade I think we got to add Philip Rivers just because he's going to put up crazy stats won a Heisman won a national championship four years start and really good record over that time okay so end of the season here let's look at the top 25 we got Florida, Baylor, UCLA, Minnesota, Purdue, Nebraska, North Texas, Syracuse, Army, Cal. Heisman winner. Phillip wins it. That was like our only real guy uh, in on the list. Phillip, first team. Devin Hester had freaking 1,800 yards, 16 touchdowns. Larry, 1,500 yards, 17 touchdowns. Those two were absolutely absolutely incredible mangold blaylock uh whitworth so, so philip rivers and joe mauer led the way philip just blew blew the competition out of the water breed love the running back at ucla receiving it was fitzgerald and hester uh there's our tackles here's our sacks and here's the ints so team stats here so total points per game ucla florida baylor purdue minnesota points ucf baylor oklahoma georgia tulsa now let's just look at some of our players here so we already looked at philip but uh yeah four year starter over 3,000 yards each year, had 155 total yards, total touchdowns. You know, he, he's got to be in the running for player of the decade. Won a Heisman, won a Natty. Vince Young, how is his sophomore? Oh, he got injured in like week one, literally in week one. Ah, uh, look at his stats in week one, too. He had 58 yards rushing and 329 yards and five total touchdowns out for the year wow okay so that kind of explains why they had a bit of a down year 
A Rod's just been, you know, not going to put up crazy stats. He runs the bar really well. Just he's been so good at UCLA. Hopefully he's back for one more year. Ryan for Pat Fitzpatrick. Forgot about him at Nevada. Never put up really crazy stats. Mark Vick, 2,400 yards, 22 touchdowns, ran for 719. Really nice year for him. Um, yeah, so that's kind of oh, Kevin Oliver. How are his stats? He was super consistent at Baylor. Four-year starter. Oh, runs the ball, throws the ball, was really good for the Bears. Cedric Benson barely used two-time returner of the whatever year, um, but barely really played. It was all kind of, oh, okay. They really started to throw the ball, I think, more. Frank Gore, this year, 1,000 yards. Michael Turner, 1,000 yards. D'Angelo Williams. Like, they have three of the top five running backs in the country on that team. Um and Ohio State has the other two. Vincent Jackson, 1,000 yards this year. Braylon Edwards, I mean, he lost his QB. Roddy White at Penn State, 1,000 yards. San Antonio Holmes, never going to put up crazy numbers. Larry Fitz, crazy year. Uh, Michael Clayton probably had a bit of a down year. Yeah, he lost his quarterback and uh, couldn't really recover. Heath Miller, perfect player at Nebraska for them. Mo, uh, Mercedes Lewis. Neither guy put up crazy numbers. Okay, National Signing Day. QB Sanchez going to Oregon State. Okay, and we knew Colt McCoy and we knew Chase Daniels. So the QBs have not been going to the big schools. Darren McFadden goes to Bama. That's a big get for Bama. Jamal Charles goes to UW. Okay, UW. Rashawn Mendenhall goes to Army. Ray Rice goes to Michigan. Jonathan Stewart goes to UCLA. And Steve Slayton goes to Marshall. Uh, we knew we knew Nebraska. We knew Mario and Hayward Bay goes to Florida over Ohio State. Both of them desperately needed a wide receiver. But now Ohio State really has nobody for next year. Okay, they got a few four stars in the door, but those guys are not going to be impact players next year. Jermichael Finley goes to AM. Uh, or goes to Vandy. Eugene Monroe goes to Army. D end. Uh, we have none. D tackle. I already seen. Yeah. Sue goes to Florida. James Laronitis goes to Ohio State. Ray Maluga goes to Stanford. Cushing goes to Syracuse. Curtis Lofton goes to K-State. Uh, Walter Thurman goes to UCLA. Kenny Phillips goes to Bama. And it won't let me look at free safety. And Jenkins goes to Georgia. So let's go look at our top classes here. So Nebraska, Florida, Notre Dame, Washington, Army, Ohio State, UCLA, UCF, and Georgia Tech. Okay, there we go. Okay, actually, I want to do a little bit of custom conference. I want to move Army to the Big Big Ten. Put them and Baylor have to go against each other. Uh, they still won't have a conference championship game. I just wish the Big Ten had a conference championship game, and then it wouldn't be kind of. It's just kind of unfair. It can go both ways, where sometimes it gives them like almost a free entry, but also sometimes it'll hurt them if both teams are twelve and zero. Yeah, we're gonna go Army. You are gonna go to the Big. 12. Yeah, now we got Baylor and Army. At least we have two like ranked teams at the top. Hopefully they'll have to play each other quite a bit. And uh yeah, I, I think that's gonna work work well. Because honestly, Army's been getting really good recruits. Really good. Okay, so we are going to look at Barry Alvarez going to DC at SC. Bobby Bowden, head coach at Central Michigan now. Mac Brown, Louisiana, uh, you know, raging Cajuns. Pete's been at Colorado forever. Pretty good record there, 84 and 57. I mean, they're not like an incredible team, but they're doing the job. Jim Harbaugh, safe at Mississippi State. Woody Hayes, low job security, one bad year. If they fire freaking Woody Hayes, I, I will lose my freaking mind. I'll lose my mind. 26 years there. He has one down year because his QB got hurt. Lou Holtz at Iowa State, Don James, OC at Tulane, Jimmy Johnson, head coach at Boise State. Safe for now. How Chip Kelly got hired again at Oregon. This is his third time. I don't understand it. Urban Meyer, obviously safe at Florida. Robert Nealon safe at Tennessee. Ed Orgeron, low at LSU. Tom Osborne, safe at Nebraska. Joe Paw, he's at San Jose State. Gary Patterson, now at Oklahoma State. Nick Saban, still at Wisconsin. Shem Beckler at Penn State. Schnellenberger, Kirby safe. Spurrier, still at Ole Miss OC. Dabo safe at Bama. 
Barry Switzer safe at Oklahoma. Kyle Whittingham back at Utah for his second year. That is going to wrap up this video. Still have three more to go. And guys, if you made it this far in this video and you've watched the rest of the series and you're still not subbed, definitely sub down below. Then if you're watching this in the future and the episode six, you know, chapter number five of this series is out and you can watch it right here or here. It's going to be up for one of these two spots.